Okay, should be live now. We're trying to troubleshoot some difficulties with streaming, but I think we're live. Let me know if you can hear stuff and see stuff okay, and we'll get to setup and everything in a minute. But uh, <laughs> this comment, let's take a moment for the poor motherboard, which will give its life tonight and probably a CPU or two. Let's, let's hope not. All right, so can you hear and see stuff okay? Looks like it. Looks like everyone's good. I, I guess I'll go ahead and say this now, too, for people who catch the archive. I've noticed that there's always a couple comments. <laughs> now there's going to be more. On the archive, when the archive of the stream goes up, within a few minutes of it going up, there's always comments that are like, yes, I can hear you okay. And just in case it's not clear, <laughs> I can't see what you're saying at that point live. It is no longer live. The live part's over. It's an archive. This is live now, but when it goes up, it won't be live. Is that confusing for anybody? <laughs> so I'm sure someone will hear me say, this is live now, and go, oh, OK, and then post a comment and say, yes, I can hear you OK. But uh, that was then, and this is now. So all right, it says people, people say they can hear stuff. All right, cool. Cool. So let me um, let me get a tweet out and we'll get this started. Let's see. So say uh, we are live streaming the 9900 KS for liquid nitrogen overclocking. All right. So yeah, the goal today is play around with the KS and try and get it to six gigahertz. Maybe we'll see. Uh, I stopped short of that in pre-testing, so I actually haven't gotten there yet. I don't know if the one I've chosen will. We have a couple to choose from, and we'll be uh, partly bound by silicon quality, partly bound by my abilities, partly bound by BIOS. So there's a lot we have to push through today to try and get 6 gigahertz. I'll give, a, give Roman a shout-out, too. He's already done a video where um, I think he did 6, but he did stable at 5.8 or something. But Roman also, keep in mind, their Bauer is uh, functionally a professional overclocker, and I'm a hack. So we're going to see if I can do it. All right. So I've got it. Everything's sent out. Uh, what we're working with is I have chosen an EVGA Z390 Dark, and I decided to just go ahead and make them the sponsor of this video while we're at it. We basically choose advertisers more or less at random, and I wasn't sure who to run for this one, but uh, it worked out because I was having a lot of issues with other boards, and so I used this one. This one works pretty well, whereas like the, I tried a Gigabyte board, I had issues with an Asus board. I don't know if it's the KS specifically or what. It might just be the KS and BIOS revisions that have gone out recently not being completely validated or something, but I had a lot of issues with them. Um, I actually thought the CPU was dead at one point because one of the boards I was testing with was not booting at all. So that was a little concerning. This one works. So we're going to go with this. They're in the link in the description if you want to pick one up. But the Z390 Dark is properly a high-end overclocking board. They rotated the socket so that they could get the VRM layout, kind of like those old, oh, what was that company? Uh, I want to say it was like LAN Party. That old, the, there was an old motherboard layout that did this, and it hasn't really been done since. So EVGA rotated it. It allows them to get the connectors all 90 degrees, and that's why they did that. But it's also cool for overclocking because this is a two dim board. So with two slots, one of the advantages is that you push the memory closer physically. You shorten the trace length. You simplify the trace layout. And for working with memory overclocking, which we're not going to do a ton of today, it, it is easier to do. So uh, we're going to set this up. I have. It's obviously not prepped right now, so we're going to do that live. And I'll take a few questions. All right, so one of these says, why should 6 gigahertz be relevant in a future where software development needs to be more optimal and utilize more resources and threads? Well, frequency is one of the resources. So answer your question in the question. Uh, I'm going to read all the land some people recognize. DFI land party, thank you. Yeah, that's it. So. Uh, Gareth Bearclaw and Mike Fish, both, and actually uh, Corey Swan, all pointed, all, all responded to LAN party. So DFI LAN party is, is the one I was thinking of. Thank you for that. 
they are no longer in business, unfortunately, but they were, uh, they made some very vibrant motherboards back when acrylic and neons were popular. Okay, uh, so I need to clean that off first. That was from pre-testing. And then we're going to do some insulation and setup, and we're gonna throw an LN2 pot on it. I'm using the Derbauer Beast LN2 pot. And that'll be our uh, massive copper container for the liquid nitrogen once we get to it. This is CRC. I, I actually prefer to use rubbing alcohol for this, but this was closer. So we're gonna use that. Do you need an overhead light for a little bit or? Or do you, so we'll probably be set up like this for a little while. Okay, so I'm just cleaning the CPU out and then we're going to prep the, the board with some insulation. Once we're done with everything, I'll use, uh, this will be off camera, but I'll use our ultrasonic cleaner to clean the board. Totally pre-recorded, Adam says, including your comment. All right, what do you think an i7, do you think an i7-6700K would be upgrading, worth upgrading purely for gaming when? Uh, it depends on if you're using something that actually is limited by it. If you're playing like, well, first of all, if you're playing higher resolution, then you're going to be fine for a while. But I don't know, I just judge that based on when I'm unhappy with the, um, the frame rate for the GPU that I have. So there's, there's no hard answer. That's good enough for now. I'll do the rest in a minute. OK. Let's pop these out momentarily. This RAM has been in use since RIP LTT and uh, RIP J. Steve, we are so disappointed AF. This is so pre-recorded. I think this is going to be the meme for this stream. Uh, and then also, what monitor is that? We get asked that every time. This is, and I have to check every single time. It was a sponsor for a while, and we do actually use it. It's a uh, Gigabyte Aorus AD27QD is the monitor we're using for the monitoring system. <sighs> OK, uh, insulation. So best practice. Uh, would be to take off the VRM heatsink and all this stuff and then do Vaseline on the MOSFETs and the inductors and stuff for condensation. I don't really want to get that involved with it. I think, I think we're going to just try and not run this bench long enough to, or keep it cold enough that we're not dealing with uh, liquid water. We only have, if it's frozen, it's fine. If it's liquid, that's bad. So. I'm going to take some shortcuts, and it should be OK. Uh, so I'm not going to insulate under the VRM heat sink, even though really that's the best way to do this. But my plan is to not run this for like four hours. So I, I'm hoping to keep this to two to three max for run time. And I think if we do that, then I can get away with just insulating the immediate socket area. And then we'll wrap the rest with paper towel with shop towel. Blue shop towel works really well. We'll just get that one that's exposed. So I'll get the inner edge of the choke legs. And I'm going to read all the super chats tonight. Please note I might be on a 30 to 60 minute delay, depending on how much is going on. But I will get them all. Um, we normally cut it off at a certain point, but I'll tell you all when that happens. It's, uh, we cut them off when, it's, you know, when we're trying to close out. But that'll be a while from now. And then. Uh, oh, we don't want Vaseline on the socket. That would suck. And also, we have a promotion going on. I announced in the news video with Eden Reforestation Project, where for every GN item purchased on the store, not just order, but individual items. So if you order five things, then it'll, be, uh, it'll count five times. We're planting a minimum of 10 trees with Eden Reforestation Project. So if you buy something on store at gamersexus.net, or if you buy two things there in one order, then we'll plant 10, 20 trees, depending on how many things are in that order. Um, and then if you already have all of our stuff, but you still want to support it, we have a, a donation match we're doing on um, edenprojects.org slash gamersnexus. 
Okay, so that's the socket area. And I'm gonna need to like kind of reflow this stuff with a heat gun in a minute. Just get in here, because there's probably gonna be some blowover from the, I'm gonna set a fan up to blow all the Allen 2 vapor away from the GPU. So we're gonna hit this area. I think we should be okay. Got a couple missed spots, but I'm gonna get that with a heat gun in a second. And then we'll do the backside. Backside is actually the most important for this because what happens is you get a lot of ice buildup right here in the socket with Allen 2. Nice is fine, but once you start cold bugging and having to heat up to boot, ice turns into water and then thins short, which was happening to me during testing last night. And that's okay. Like, it doesn't necessarily kill the board. It might just short uh, and shut down if it's got good productions built into it, which this one does. But that doesn't always save you forever. At some point, something can die. So once it starts behaving funny, I learned this from Joe Stepanzi, a.k.a. Bearded Hardware. Once it starts behaving funny, it's definitely best to just break it down and, and uh, re-insulate if necessary or dry it off. But insulating here will, will help us a lot tonight with getting some more endur endurance out of the board. And I'm going to get the back of the memory, too, which, confusingly, on this board is actually up here. All right. So this is the process. The uh, Vaseline just insulates against water. The downside is cleaning up later really sucks. We have an ultrasonic cleaner now. I can show that off in a second, actually. I'm going to hit the pins, too. Actually, they're on this side. But uh, we have an ultrasonic cleaner now. And that makes things a lot easier, but it's still not perfect. I, I can't just run it once. Last time I did this, I had to run it like probably a total of two hours to get a board really decently clean, and it still wasn't perfectly clean. So it's a good solution, but it's, it's not perfect. There's still some fast residue on boards. But we did just buy a new cleaner, a Branson Electric cleaner, recommended by one of our stream viewers that I'm hoping will help. OK, so that, that'll get us started there. Let me check on the Super Chats and comments. And uh, OK, let's see. Super Chats, where are you? Actually, let me grab a tissue really quick, too. I'll be right back. Okay. All right, so a couple of super chats. We had one from Glenn Owls81, uh, $2. Will you be checking out XFX's Redemption 5700 XT? I ordered it, should be here tomorrow. So yes, but timing's gonna be tight, so I don't know exactly when we'll do it, but it is on the way and should be here shortly. Next one, Mark Chambers, $5, says, thanks for supporting the Tech Showdown fundraiser love your work well thank you for uh, i got a text from evj saying they can hear the stream okay you know jacob <laughs> you're a little bit late on that i probably read it late though uh yeah no the tech showdown fundraiser was really important um it's i think it's still live uh unfortunately that did not turn out well so tech showdown kevin from tech showdown uh, did pass away in Taiwan, and it's, it's very unfortunate, but we knew who he was. I never got to meet him, unfortunately, but we knew who he was. Community's pretty small, so we all do know of each other or know each other, and at this point, uh, Steve from Hardware Unboxed uh, has sort of taken control of community interaction and, and getting the uh, family connected with the community. Uh, Bazinga X, $5. Here we go again. Wonder how long until Jay tries to beat whatever score you get. Well, that'll depend on if Jay can even <laughs> figure out how to do any of this. So Jay, whenever you're ready, let's go. I'm ready, I'm ready to do another kinpin uh, refereed, I guess, match, show match against you. Uh, let me do two more of these. Gareth Faircloth, $5. Oh, see that sucker until she goes boom or not. It's your call after all. We'll see. Um, it, I mean, with, with uh, water buildup, it's always possible it shorts out and doesn't come back. So hopefully this prevents a lot of that, but it's possible it goes boom. 
Um, let me grab the, I'll bring it into the shot, grab the cleaner just to show what I meant when I was talking about that. So, uh, this is the ultrasonic cleaner we got. The way it works is it's, it kind of looks like a deep fryer. It's got like a, it's going to tip over. It's got a cage in it. You put the component in the cage, run the, it's super loud. Uh, it, it's ultrasonic. <laughs> so super loud, very high pitched, not pleasant to be around. Can't run it with cameras going, but cleans pretty well. Definitely better than, I mean, it's kind of heavy to hold, but I didn't want to put boards in a dishwasher. I know Roman does that. It works out okay for him, but um, I, I just feel a little weird about that for numerous reasons, like health and safety and uh, mineral deposits. So we got this. Um, Roman can keep doing his dishwasher thing. He seems to have it down. <laughs> but, uh, we're going with ultrasonic cleaner. Definitely more annoying way to do it, but it's effective. And then someone in our stream recommended this. This is not a sponsor, but Branson EC formulated cleaning. He said to mix three to 4% of this with distilled water, and that should clean more effectively. So we'll try that maybe after the stream. Okay, Let's see what chat's saying. Is that a Lewis Rossman special? Steve, did you get it from Lewis Rossman? Does he use that one? I know he uses ultrasonic cleaners. I don't know what brand he uses, but uh, I do know, I know that he does use them. Jay's two gigahertz. <laughs> poor, poor Jay. Jay is too busy home decorating. His, his uh, computer he's been working on, that latest video he did is, is actually, uh, he's doing some cool stuff with that build. Uh, okay, all right, I think I'm caught up on most of the comments. Um, heat gun, I need a heat gun. And then we'll reflow this Vaseline and get the board finished and prep. Okay, cool. This, this one works really well. So we have a couple tools for this. Uh, we have a we have a torch that we need sometimes. We have, this is just for prep for the most part. It's useful to hot box the components after you. I learned all of this from Joe, Bearded Hardware. But what he taught me was you get kind of a cardboard box, cut a hole in the middle, stick this in it. Don't run it too long because they will burn up. And that's just supposed to dry everything out when you're done. And we also use it for setup for uh, getting the vast to kind of like I guess it just makes it flow into like the smaller crevices of things because you've got all these solder joints on here. Um, so it helps stuff drip in there. Okay. I guess, I think I can just run this over here on a different circuit just to be safe because it does pull a lot of power and I don't want to trip the breaker the stream's on. So this is going to be a little loud for a second. I'm going to talk over it. I guess I'll take some super chats because if I'm talking while it's going, it shouldn't be as obnoxious. No, we don't want 700 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a bit aggressive. And we do want more speed. That should be good. Uh, okay. So another comment was from Aaron Hollenbeck, $20. Something extra for the great content. Thank you, I appreciate it. Definitely helps us with the streams. And like I said, we've got a couple things set up too with, um, if you buy stuff from the store during the stream, store.gamersaccess.net, we are planting 10 trees per item ordered. I did a donation match set up on edenprojects.org slash gamersnexus if you prefer that. And, um, and someone brought up Kevin earlier from Tech Showdown. I'll go ahead and mention. He's, I'll, I'll try and dig up the link and paste it in chat. Uh, there's a GoFundMe that Steve from Hardware Unboxed set up for the family as well, which uh, 
I believe Linus and UFD Tech also supported. Okay, so we missed a few spots with this. Uh, where'd it go? Carl Hall, five dollars. Thank you. When will you be joining Floatplane? No current plans. I say it every time uh, because it's true. We don't. We are not in any discussion with them at this time about that. Or Luke, I guess, would be the main guy. No current plans. I can't even keep up right now. It's nothing about float plane really as much as it is. I can barely keep up with the main channel as is. And doing the extra work we do for Patreon would kind of roll into that if we went that route. And I don't currently plan to. So it's just, it's too much, too much to do. So no plans. All right, let's get, get this side seated. We're taking a long time on this. So all this does, I don't know how well the camera shows it, but really easy for me to see from this angle. It just like liquefies it, gets it into the smaller cracks where you have small solder joints and things like that, contacts. Okay, and now we can flip it and do the other side. And while we're between that, let me go find that link. Uh, okay. Here it is. So I'm going to post that GoFundMe that they set up for Kevin in chat if anyone wants to read that. Okay. Um, front side. I don't have a great way to support this so that the without getting like, oh, actually, I just do this. I'm trying to get it, not get the Vaseline all over the table that I want on the motherboard. Okay. This comes with the, uh, the Z390 Dark and the X299 Dark. So we're gonna get this side. You're not gonna have as great of a camera angle, but Andrew will try and make it work. And this side, we are skipping a few steps and not, um, not insulating directly on the MOSFETs, but I'm just planning to not keep it running all night and then that should be okay. And at first sign of trouble, we'll deal with it. Okay, so we're done with this one for a little bit. Um, I think we just need, am I ready for cables? I think so. We have a couple CPU options here. I have one that Gigabyte sent. I have the official review sample as well. And uh, I did work with Intel to get another one for this stream that's supposed to be specially binned. I was having some issues getting it to boot on the other boards I was using last night. I think it was a board issue, but I think that's the one I have in here right now. So we're going to try that one. This one was not the review sample, but it was pulled for live stream specifically. I'm hoping it will overclock better than we typically see. Uh, it is not representative of the average. There's no guarantee you'll get a chip, however good this might be. But also, a chip that's good, I, this is really important, a chip that's good on, uh, LN2 on air, which is how this would have been binned, is not necessarily good on LN2. So um, there's a bit of, of scaling there at play. So we, we might have a bad chip on LN2, great chip on air, or vice versa. But we're going to try that one first. I need to clean the rest of this LN2 pot. So this is, these things are really cool. They're like, they're really neat, the liquid nitrogen pots. I know you've, probably anyone regular has seen these on our channel a few times now, but got a bit of water from last night from testing it. Um, this one is made by Roman, by Dare Bauer. He's got a YouTube channel as well. And I wish I could convey how heavy one of these is <laughs> through video, but the mass is impressive because just it's really dense, all copper, and then just a bunch of holes drilled in it. And that's for increasing surface area so the LN2 can soak. And uh, you, what you want is you want the liquid nitrogen to evaporate basically immediately. <coughs> I'm actually going to remount this too so you can see that process. So you want it to evaporate pretty much immediately and not build up in the LN2 pot and bubble over. That's important to avoid. And um, having all that surface area helps. So there's a thermocouple. This is a T-type. Uh, K-type's the most common type of thermocouple. Uh, we plug this into a thermocouple reader. I'll show you that. Let me switch these. T2. T1, okay. 
So we have one I use for ambient, and one I use for... Let's get that going. I use for ambient, and one I use for uh, what we call pot temperature. So that's what this one is right here, and that one is ambient. And then we have uh, 24.8 for, well, they're both roughly ambient right now anyway, although this one I've, I've been poking at. So 24.8, 23-ish, so somewhere in there for ambient. Uh, it's a bit warm in here right now, but then this will go into the Allen 2 pot. That'll give us a pot temperature. We need that because the CPU stops reading at a certain point, uh, like below zero typically. And so we have, at that point, we have no visibility as to what temperature anything is. Um, this is not comparable to CPU temperature. You can't look at the reading you get from this thing and compare it to hardware info. Oh, that's going to be way better. Nice. Yesterday, I did not have this set up that well. So that's what you want is this to sink in as far as possible. So it's probably somewhere about here, right at the edge of the die. And I think that's where it's going to stop. So that'll give us a really good reading help us control the temperature. One of the challenges that you run into with this stuff is a CBB or a cold boot bug. And uh, cold boot issues are a huge pain because what happens is you want it to be as cold as possible so that you can uh, drive the frequency up and the voltage up and get that cold scale effect. But if it's too cold, then the system just stops working. and Every CPU is a little bit different. Architectures are a little bit different. Boards are all different. And um, in this case, last night, I think I was getting a cold bug at around minus 90 pot temperature, but I didn't have the thermocouple in that far. So we're going to have to rediscover what that is today since I just remounted it. I'm going to get that ultra secure. I'm not too happy with how, how I taped that down. So we're going to get a little bit more tape at the top. And we'll do a, a rubber band. This is all going to freeze, so hopefully it doesn't move too much. I don't know how well this tape does it at negative temperatures. OK, and now we need uh, insulation on the liquid nitrogen pot. I'm going to close the uh, KP paste. OK, it's like a, every time we do this, I feel like it's a cooking show. I need to do some super chats too. Let me get some of those while we're doing this. Uh, where did I stop? Thomas Nast, $5. Clock multiplier of 69 and 4.20 V-Core is the answer. 4.20 V-Core, uh, although great for memes, probably not so good for the CPU. HBO Matt, $2. Uh, <laughs> Liquid fluoride thorium salt cooling today. Nope, we're, we are, we're not doing anything fancy, just liquid nitrogen. Fernando uh, Orozco, COP7900. I'm not sure what that, let's see, COP currency. Colombian peso, is that right? Cool, we get viewers from all over, it's always great. Uh, all praise techno Jesus, so he can reach six gigahertz. We'll see. Uh, like I said, Roman's the actual pro who knows what he's doing, and I just hack at it until Joe comes here and then does it. Uh, Michael Stettenberg, side channel downhill live stream is when? I'm not sure. I know you can do Wi-Fi with GoPros. I don't know, like, if you tether it to a phone. I don't know how good that would be, but it'd be, it'd be cool to try it. I don't know if it would work. That'd be pretty cool, though. Yes, there's a side channel, if you didn't know. Uh, GN Steve is a side channel. I, some of it's biking, some of it's technical. Some of it is Snowflake the Cat. Um, I uploaded a technical discussion there with Wendell about Raid for Patreon backers. We'll set that public eventually, maybe in, uh, I don't know, a couple weeks or something, if you didn't see it. But. Um, we also do the, uh, I publish the bike stuff over there. Okay. All right. So this has to go in there. Whole point of this is, again, for water drip. I should really insulate the top separately, but I don't, uh, yeah, let's do that, I guess.
I'll point out a couple things too. So liquid nitrogen cylinder is 180 liters. This one's more obnoxious than most. Um, they are supposed to leak to prevent pressure buildup because these things can explode if they don't have a pressure release valve. But it's the tanks that we get from air gas, sometimes they just leak nonstop, even when it's below the pressure threshold, and it's just it's it's a quality issue. Um, and it's unfortunate when it happens because then we lose a lot of our LN2 before we can use it. It is supposed to leak a little bit, but not not nonstop always when the pressure threshold is is not even met. So that's a 22 PSI one. It's non-medical grade, obviously, so it's cheaper. Okay, that's good in, good insulation for the most part. Uh, and now we need to set up the CPU. I guess I'll get the RAM in there too before we're blocked off. Let's see, Paul, uh, I, I'm not even gonna try your, your last name. Paul M, uh, 9.99, thank you. Sorry for my lack of ability to pronounce your last name. Thank you for con continuing to make the best computer hardware content anywhere. Well, like I always say, in response to that kind of content. We'll see if that remains true with the stream today. We, we shall see if uh, I can live up to that. So this is, uh, we've got really two good options for thermal paste for these endeavors. There's KPX, which is made by Canepin. Canepincooling.com is where you can buy this. And then there's Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut, which, uh, Roman is involved with, their Bauer. We're gonna use KPX today, I'm almost out of cryonaut. They're both very good. Um, these paste that are good for sub-zero, uh, specifically, so you've got a couple things to worry about with sub-zero. The main one is the paste cracking. And it'll crack and then what you have to do is heat it up to get it uh, sort of reflowed so that there's, I just dripped paste all over the, uh, the RAM, but that's fine, it's non-conductive electrically. Um, you have to kind of reflow it and the problem is that uh, that means you have to bring your pot temperature way up hotter and when you do that you start having more condensation build up because now you're melting the ice and you might have to break down so you really want to avoid paste that the crack frequently and KPX and, and Cryonaut are both built for LN2 so this is actually, um, this one I'm using is a bit older, so it is kind of hardened, which is harder to spread, unfortunately. I might need to get a new one out. There it goes. That's the other thing. Paste has a shelf life, so um, it, does not, it does not last forever. If you're like, see a fire sale on MX4, you shouldn't really buy a bunch of it, because uh, if you're not using it, then it, it will harden and lose some of its properties. Okay, not bad other than the corner. God damn it. Okay, that'll spread. And then we need some on this corner. And that'll spread. Okay, bit of a missed spot in there. Okay, the rest will squish out. I should probably get a new jar out at some point. But it should work for today. All right, so um, insulation around the outer edges of the board. Even though we've done uh, Vaseline in the immediate area, I wanna get some around here. Let's see, super chat. Bazinga X, you would get to seven gigahertz if Snoof, Snoof, Snoofflake, if Snowflake were there supervising. Maybe, but she also would probably not really let me do a whole lot. She, she tends to be the investigative type, as most cats are, and uh, probably would end up like laying down on the computer or something. JW Dickinson, interesting. I hope I don't have to give too much to get my damn GN beanie to buy. Yes, I, I remember your request, and I do remember 
specifically you requesting it. Uh, I don't know. I had that design drafted up like a year ago. I guess we just need to pursue it. I'll try to remember. Hopefully our distributor's watching and reminds me. OK, I need to think about setup. So I want to be able to rotate this so that the stream viewers so you guys can see some of what I'm doing. But I don't want a video card in the way of everything. So I guess the best way to rotate it will make it a little harder for me to manage, but should be better for the stream. So we're going to try like this. Definitely harder for me to work with, but that's OK. Uh, I need to plug in all the cables. All right, so we're going to pass these under. Actually, we can just go. Yeah, we can go under. Gasoline is so terrible to work with. The reason I'm using these color connectors is so I can I quickly identify 12 volt and we'll clamp it and show you the power consumption during the stream for just the CPU. Um, I need a, another paper towel and we should be good. I have a 24 pin. This is going to be a real pain in this orientation. Power supply should probably be over there. OK. All right. Here's our buttons we're going to be using a lot today. Safe boot is the red one. That's a great button every motherboard should have. And we have power and restart. This is all just an insulation. When Joe's here, he really doesn't do too much of this, and he gets away with it fine. But I like to be a little more careful than necessary. Has this been cleaned? No. I need to clean the bottom of this. I'm going to use CRC for this again. CRC is really nice, but uh, it's contact cleaner. It's great for like cleaning out DRAM slots if you get paste in them. Great for cleaning pins if you get paste on pins or, or in pads. But leaves a residue is the annoying part. At least this, this particular brand and model does. It's because it doesn't destroy the paste. It just kind of moves it around. Or picks some of it up, but all right, good enough. And then I need this oriented that way. And we need to kind of center it. I can't see. OK. Should be fine, I think. It's super heavy. We don't need any screws to hold it down. So we're good there. SSD. I want that to be accessible even with the video card installed. We're just going to throw a 2080 Ti in there, but we're not doing any GPU stuff today. It's just going to be Cinebench, I think. But just in case we do Time Spy, we'll have that accessible. And I need display. Is that HDMI? Yes. Uh. Biggest problem with this stuff is how much of a mess it makes. And I'll get to the chat comments in a second, but we are almost ready to start. OK, that will be visible for the stream viewers this time. And then we've got a clamp we can throw on there later. That will give you power readings. We have a fan to blow away the vapor from building up on other components. Just use a maglev. For that, it's heavy enough at the base. I can just sit it there, hopefully, without tipping over. OK, so how's chat going? 
normal chat, not super chat for a second. I hit the back arrow. Chat, what's chat saying? Now we've got a 3900X to 6 gigahertz. You won't see that out of me. <laughs> did I see a wire get under that pot? I don't know. Did other people see that? I don't think so. Is this under it? No. No, it's sticky night. We're good. That's the only wire there. So, yeah, we're fine. Thank you, though. Uh, wonder if you guys will get a review copy of the XFX Thick 3 Ultra. I ordered one. And I asked them for a copper base plate replacement for the Thick 2 because they did promise it. I have not heard back yet. Uh, well, they said they would send me one, but they never followed up with sending it. So I, I need to follow up again and ask, hey, where is it? Um, we need six and, or need eight pins. Okay. This old NZXT power supply is actually been pretty good to us. I hope that doesn't jinx it, but this is, we've been using this since at least 2013. They don't make this one anymore. Um, I've always liked it though. It was our official test bench power supply for a couple of years. It was our case test bench power supply. It has gone through LN2 stuff, so it's been a very reliable platform. I don't remember if it was Seasonic or who it was that actually made it. Okay. Uh, any other questions? <laughs> Max Cowgill. I caught my cat chewing on my hashtag RipLTT2 autographed poster today. I think she smelled snowflake. <laughs> that should have shipped out of a distribution center where snowflake is not allowed. So <laughs> hopefully not. But if I signed it, who knows? Cats, cats get on everything. So <laughs> that is funny, though. Uh, OK, I think we're set up. I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, yeah. Input, keyboard, and I don't have a mouse. This is going to be fun to get in there. Uh. Oh, and one important thing. I have intentionally faced the uh, power supply fan away from the bench, because otherwise it will suck in the Allen 2 vapor, and it can um, freeze over, which is not useful. Mouse. You set for tomorrow? Yeah, okay. Okay, cool, thanks. Okay, fan's not plugged in yet. That's intentional though. I think we're good. Let's see if it turns on. It does turn on. I'm gonna unplug the SSD so we go into BIOS when it boots. Uh, let's see. Carl Hall, Super Chat, $5. When will you be joining? Oh, I got yours. <laughs> Kanza, $10. Steve, why is it when you say water, you're always hesitant? Dip your toes into the water. Insulate from the water. I don't know why I said insulate from the pause water. Uh, I don't know. Dip your toes into the water because it was a really bad pun. Damien Baznet. I guess that ad was effective, though. People remember that part. Damien Baznet, $5. Here, I have fine, five Linus rupees. Oh, yeah, they are Canadian dollars. Thank you. I will use that next time I spam Linus' stream with $1 donations. Although I always do that in USD, so he gets the better end of the deal when he does it back to us. And then that one time he did that, he had his, uh, his credit card blocked. That was pretty funny. He spammed our stream with $1 donations. <laughs> and uh, his credit card was declined and then frozen because they thought it looked fraudulent. They probably said, Linus, it is out of the norm for you to spend dollar amounts this low. <laughs> so we thought it was a fraud. Uh, well, so it booted. Where's our current temperature? 31. Okay, cool. Looking good. So this thing is, there's so much mass in the copper for the LN2 pot. I can kind of leave it there for a while and it would be fine. 
But let's get started. I'll fill in some of the um, Allen 2 thermoses. I don't really know where to put stuff. This is our torch we'll use later. I might talk about some of the Allen 2 basics just in case people haven't heard it before, but um, I think we've, we've done that enough or probably most of you have heard me do the spiel on it. Okay. So this is a doer. This is a 30 liter doer. And it's currently full with LN2, so it's very heavy. But I'm gonna fill up one of these Stanley flasks. These are just like, these are just kind of like uh, backpacking or hiking style thermoses. Work really well. Um, so we, for smaller LN2 bots, I'll pour this into a smaller one, but this one's got a really wide lip, so I can just pour it straight out of that. Should be good to start. Let's go into BIOS, set some basics. People are going to freak out about the lid not being closed. Uh, let's see. Mr. J, $25. Wow, thank you. Thank you for all you have done for our community and doing your best to keep the industry on their toes and honest. It's a full time, it's a couple full time jobs to do that, I will admit. Do you need this any higher or is this okay, Andrew? Okay, I'll push a little that way so I don't hit it. Yes, it is It is a couple full-time jobs to keep everyone on their toes. Uh, let's do XMP, but drop at 3200 and just focus on CPU. 1.4 there. And let's do 50. Start with 50X. Yeah, cool, perfect. Zero, oops, zero for AVX offset. AVX offset will bring your multiplier down. So if you set 50, like this is a really good utility that people don't use enough, I think. So if you're validating for Prime AVX or Blender, which is AVX, you might be able to hit like say 53X, so 5.3 gigahertz for uh, all core in a game, but maybe you can't quite hold it in Blender. So instead of dropping it to 52 for everything, you can do 53 and then set a, a one AVX offset, and that'll bring you down to 52X, so 5.2 gigahertz, for things like Blender when AVX uh, instruction sets are used, and you'll be at 53 when the non-AVX workloads, like a lot of games, I don't think all of them are anymore, but a lot of games are non-AVX, most of them for sure. Uh, and um, I can explain more of this stuff too as I go. I'm gonna keep an eye on chat right now. Let me know if this is actually helpful information. Uh, I'm not sure anymore like how much of our audience this is repeat info for. Why are people saying Linus a lot in all, all caps? Is he in chat or no? I'm looking for his name. <laughs> uh, let me know if you want more explanation of things like that and I can go through it all. But uh, if it's all just like old information, we'll skip it and just go to the overclocking. I don't see, was he in chat or something? Was it a super chat maybe? I don't know. <laughs> okay, what's chat saying? Uh, we're still at 31 degrees by the way. Okay, hey Steve, you guys are doing a great job. Keep on, one question. I just got liquid metal on the 2080 Ti MSI Ventus. It says nickel plated copper. Would that be okay for prolonged usage? Uh, yes, so the best way to think about this is an IHS. Linus just left, someone says. Linus Tic Tacs, I don't know what's going on. Uh, <laughs> typically, liquid metal is used on an IHS, right? Like a, a, an integrated heat spreader. Those are nickel plated copper. So it's good to use on those for long term use, for sure. Uh, we've done some longevity tests that one year, published it a while ago. And the, uh, if it's a nickel plated copper cobalt for a GPU, it's, it's also fine. I don't really like using it for, for GPUs, but it's certainly fine. I just, I mean, you're already direct dye at that point, so it's not as beneficial, but it still helps, I guess. I, I, I prefer to use thermal paste though, honestly, for most GPUs, just because it's a pain to take them apart and re redo them. You'll get some plating over time, but it's not a big deal. Uh, okay. Extreme voltage mode enabled. Let's just start vCore at, um, I don't know, we need a baseline. Need some baseline tests. Did I save my notes? Yes. 
What's a good baseline? Let's do, let's see how low we can get it at 50 first. Let's do that. Let's start at like 1.25 and then bring it down at just five gigahertz. So we're at all core for the 900KS already, but we're just gonna try and bring down the V core as much as we can for a baseline. And memory's fine, everything's good. Okay, let's save a profile and just call this like preset. So as it gets reset when we have issues, I can just load that and we're good to go. Reconnect the SSD. I saw Joe's name in chat, Bearded Hardware. He's the one who, he's basically the, uh, <laughs> you know, he, he looks kind of like you would expect maybe <laughs> a blacksmith from the black, the, the like, I don't know, the middle ages or something to look. And just like you would expect of a trained, wizened, old, really old blacksmith from the dark ages, Joe has a lot of knowledge, and he's taught me a lot of this stuff. So uh, if you don't know who he is, his name's popping up in chat every now and then. Uh, Bearded Hardware is his channel. You can subscribe to him. And I do need to schedule to get Joe out here again sometime soon. <laughs> is that a fair description, Joe? You'd be shocked how old that man is. It's like he's been around for hundreds of years. It's amazing. Looks great. <laughs> okay, so baseline everything. Let's just do Cinebench R15. I'm using this because it's fast and we have a lot of comparative data. It is not R20, that's fine. R15 has a lot more for us to kind of quickly glance at. Um, this first run is going to have hardware info running, so it's not really super valid because it'll have some influence from that, but this will allow us to look at numbers. So it is holding 5G. What's our, I need to check our mount. So core is reading about 38 to 42. And what is our pot temperature? 2.3. That's actually a giant, the, the giant delta. That is not good. But we're going to roll with it. I might have to remount later. Or maybe torch it a little bit. That delta is, okay, there we go. That's looking a lot better. Cool, good. I just kind of uh, moved it back and forth a bit and pushed down on it. Uh, okay, what have we hit thus far? We just started. I did set up up till this point. We don't even need LM2 right now. Don't need to pour that. Anyway, 2183. I have a bunch of notes written down. Um, oh, that is the exact score I got yesterday for the same test. So I pre-tested. I didn't go through everything. We have territory we're going to get into during the stream where I haven't, haven't been yet. But I pre-tested to make sure this thing would actually work. Uh, anyway, so let's check our, where's the EVGA readout? I think I scrolled past it. There it is. We want V core. There it is. Okay, let's check while it's running what V core thinks it is. So I think I set 1.25. It thinks it's at about 1.22. For five gigahertz, I, just to kind of emphasize, that's incredibly good. It's not that impressive for 9900KS because they they're all uh, binned. All of the 9900KSs are. And if you're not sure about that, Silicon Lottery just published their numbers for a bunch of them, larger sample size, and they, they did confirm it's binned. Um, so this is not super impressive, but we'll see if it gets better as we go. I need to bring down the voltage and see at what point we crash. So I'm going to use XTU, uh, and that'll give us something easy to work with. Let me check Super Chats for a second. Let's see, how far behind are we on Super Chats? Okay, we're actually not too bad right now. Cool. I'm going to try and catch up on some of these. And while we're at it, you can go to store.gamersexus.net. I'll try to shout some of these orders out too, by the way. Not going to get all of them, but I'll try and get uh, a couple of them. You can go to store.gamersexus.net during the stream or all of November. And we are doing a campaign with the Eden Reforestation Project. We worked with them last year. Uh, actually, early this year, too. And uh, so we worked with them on a campaign. We have now officially partnered with them. And we're basically doing a minimum of 10 trees planted through Eden. They have really low overhead. Their tree cost is somewhere in the range of 10 cents to 35 cents. Mangroves are more expensive, for example. And they do that by uh, employing people local to the deforested regions who are in poverty. So from an economic standpoint, give someone a job, but also means that uh, accomplishing the task of planting trees is economically viable. So it works really well both ways, and that's why we want to support them. 
and we're doing 10 trees planted per item ordered on store.gamersaccess.net. Got a couple orders. This one was from Scott in New York tonight. Picked up a Teal Logo Anniversary shirt. That's been a mainstay of ours. Thank you for picking that up. Three item order. So that is 30 trees through our campaign with Eden. Our distributor is also contributing to. This one is John from Pennsylvania. Picked up an anniversary mug, a cobalt blue beer glass, and one of our Teal Logo shirts as well. Let me do one more of these. And we also had Joseph from Massachusetts tonight picked up a cobalt blue Teardown Logo pint glass. Thank you. Uh, okay, and then Super Chat. Uh, Ian Coxon, $5. X570 Aqua, and I'm trying to figure out what RAM, thinking 32 to 64 gigabytes, what do you recommend? Brand and speed, no one has anything tested to read about. I have not worked with the Aqua, but first thing to do is check the um, LN2 pod temperature. But after you do that, check the uh, QVL, so what I'm looking for, qualified vendor list, make sure the RAM you're thinking of is on there. It's not always important, but it, it does solve some issues where, like, if you don't want to pre-configure any timings, it'll definitely help you to just uh, go to the QVL and see whatever they've tested. It'll have a profile baked in. should be easier for you. Let's close XTU. So we're at 1.225. Is that what I wanted? Not really, but let's try it. Vcore. Uh, to answer the rest of your question, did you say what CPU? No. I'm going to assume a 3900X because you're spending a lot of money on that motherboard. 1.219, okay. So uh, G-Skill Trident Z has got some good kits out there. The, the Trident Z Black is what it used to be called. That's what we're using tonight. I think it's just called Trident Z now. There's a Trident Z Neo that's branded with Ryzen all over it. It's not actually any different than the non-Neo version, but if Neo is what you can find for an affordable price, then that's fine. Let's see if this thing actually works. Core voltage, 1.2. Let's see, does it do anything? Or do we need to go to BIOS? Uh, not really, might need to go to BIOS. Okay, let's try that. And um, speeds, I, I kind of like 3200 just because when you're working with that much memory, like 64 gigabytes, I, it's probably gonna be a little easier for you to configure. 36, you're probably fine with. You can always come down in speed if you have stability issues, but 36 should be stable with, with modern Ryzen for sure, I think. Um, timings, if you're at 36, then CL16 is pretty common. You can tune it with a uh, Ryzen DRAM calculator, whatever it's called. That It doesn't do anything for you. It gives you a, a lookup table. It's pretty accurate. You might be able to get it down to like CL15, maybe even 14, depending on the kit and the, the die. But hopefully that helps a little bit. I kind of like uh, Trident Z right now for what you're asking about. OK, let's try 1.25. Where, where was I stable yesterday? Uh, we can come down more than that. Let's try 1.2. And then we need to get the L2 temperature up. OK. OK. I think we're just going to see where the bottom, where the floor is for 50x, and then we'll go up and do actual overclocking. Next one, uh, Mike Moss, $2, thank you, no message. Uh, Khan, $5, do you think Intel offering the 9900KS makes it less likely to get a good bin on a normal 9900K? Great question. Implicitly, I think the answer is yes. That was not stable. Oh, maybe it is. Because they are pulling aside CPUs to be a better CPU from the same die and product. So all the CPUs that, that's weird. Okay, wow. Thanks Windows 10. All the CPUs that are 9900K S's would have been 9900Ks. So yes, uh, it does mean you're less likely to get a, a better bid on a 900K because it's probably being pulled. But also it depends on the Inventory, how long that inventory has been there. If it's been sitting around a while, you might get one of the better ones still. But yeah, that is a, that is a downside of what's 
you know, of, of special bin chips. Okay, we want the EVGA V core readout. Uh, v core. Okay, it is actually working now. Let's check that. 1.17, according to the motherboard. We'd have to do a DMM to the back of the socket to really get an accurate reading, but uh, it is still stable. And I think I'm going to stop there and just start the overclocking now. I'm a little, a little bored of this, but um, I'll go ahead and just spoil it. Where I ended up getting stable to 50x, we were no longer stable at 1.15 set. Uh, is that true? Yes. We were stable at 1.175 set voltage, which was coming out to actually a bit higher than this. It was about 1.2 or something. Uh, okay, let's get XTU going and try some basic overclocking. All right. Okay, so voltage, we're gonna need to bring that up. I hope this works. I don't know if this tool actually works. Let's just try this first. So I'm telling it to do 1.3. Is it going to listen? Uh, EVGA sensors. V core. No. Nope. XTU is not, not passing that through. It doesn't need to stay open. That would be kind of dumb. Uh, it thinks it's applied. Well, okay. What about if we do that? Uh, I will do this through BIOS if it's an issue, though. Yeah, okay. We got to do that through BIOS. Okay, let's let's get started for real. So I'm gonna go into BIOS, set a high voltage, and start overclocking, and then we'll bring the voltage up more as we go. I'm not gonna set it crazy high to start with. We'll probably do maybe 1.4 set. And uh, I'm specifying set because what we get might be a little different, but we'll set 1.4. That'll allow us to push the clocks. And once we lose stability, we'll increase it some more after that. So let's do 1.4 for target voltage. We're going to leave IO and SA alone for now. If we start losing stability later doing memory stuff, we can push those. And then we'll do the frequency in, uh, in the OS. I think that should work. Okay. Uh, download more RAM. <laughs> I'm looking for super chats. I haven't done ri or uh, oh, we didn't do this one. VC gesture, Rip Saponzi. Lol. Sorry, Joe. He said it, not me. Uh, Tor L four ninety nine, or sorry, Cole L. Why don't laptop with USB-C charger house hubs for Ethernet and other legacy ports? Why don't laptops with USB-C, oh, house, house. Why don't laptops with USB-C chargers house hubs for Ethernet and other legacy ports? Same for wireless earbud cases and a 3.5 jack. <laughs> well, once you get into 3.5 for mobile devices, I think a lot of that is in territory of like, the phone companies are just trying to force a trend unnecessarily. So that's not really too exciting of an answer for that end. Laptops, I don't know. They're, they're all so, so insane about trying to make it the smallest possible. RJ45 might make your laptop like half a millimeter taller, so we can't have that. I don't know. I don't have an answer. I'm sorry. It drives me crazy too, and I have the same question as you. It's not a, not a thing I like. What are we at right now? Oh wow, we're at 21. Or no, we're at 16 degrees pot temperature. Okay, so let's start bringing that down now that we're actually doing stuff. And also, it'll freeze over the condensation, so we don't have to worry about that. So let's bring it down to maybe. I have to figure out where cold bug is. It was like minus 90 last night, but I've moved things around so much, it's not going to be true anymore. So let's bring it down to like minus 50 or something and just start from there. Uh, we're currently at 5.2. It was stable. We got a 2240 Cinebench score. And I'm going to take note of some of our results, but I also have notes from some pre-testing. So 52x, 
1.4 set, XMP3200 uh, for now, and 2240. That was at like 22 degrees. That was actually pretty warm. And it did pass, so we're going to save all that information. We had a question from Ben Grogan. I recognize your name. $5, question on thermals. I know more T interfaces is worse on the whole, where's the, or thermal interfaces, where's the limit? For example, four and a half millimeter pad versus half a millimeter pad plus four millimeter copper shim plus paste on a 1660. Okay, so you're saying, okay, I gotcha. So you're saying, should I do a 4.5 millimeter pad or should I do 0.5 pad, four millimeter shim, because you get copper then, so that's good, and then paste. I would have to test that. We did some of that with the XFX card and maybe the MSI Evoke, I think. And uh, uh, our solution was like, because we had to fill about five millimeters, I think. So we did like one millimeter pad and then one millimeter shim and then a, a thick pad on top of it. And it works, but not well. We only got a couple degrees lower and it really sucks like to use that much material to bridge the gap. Where is the limit? My general rule is fewer interfaces is better. Basic physics there, but the more stuff you're trying to transfer through, especially services that are imperfect, you are, well, thermal pads help because they squish together, but you're running into efficiency loss at, at every layer. And uh, I would, my theory would be that doing a single efficient high thermal conductivity thermal pad should be better than pad shim paste, but I'm not sure I'd have to test it. 2240. Let's increase that. That was a 5.2. That's pretty boring. So let's go up to something else. Let's do 5.4. 1.4 volt set. We're actually pretty warm right now, minus 16 degrees. So uh, that might be a little aggressive for me to run it there, but let's cool it down. And then I'm going to get a current clamp on there too, so we can see power. This is going to require some basic math, but it's, it's better than having a plug on the ground. because then we're, we're looking at CPU power, not system power. So I need only yellow. Hopefully there's enough slack on this cable. So all I'm doing is pulling out all the 12 volt lines and we're going to clamp them. Okay, let's get rid of that ground. Okay. And we want power in is this direction. The direction matters on these. Uh, are you able to get an angle on that that's readable? Or do I need to try and prop it up? Prop it up. Let's try. I don't know. It's, I think that's about the best I can do. Can you see that at all? Kind of. I'll, I'll try and move it in a second. It did pass, though. Um, Let's see, how can I position this? I don't want to like move the bench too much. Okay, so I need it to sit this way. How about that? Is that any better? What does that even say? I can't read it anymore. It's not doing anything right now, so it's going to be a low number. That's the current. But oh, never mind. Yeah, there's a decimal in there. 17 is what I can see from here. So multiply that by 12. That's our current power consumption. Um, this is 17. It's 200 watts right now. We're at 5.2. I set a high voltage. It can definitely run this at a lower voltage, but we're, we're going to keep increasing. Score is 2352 currently. And temperature is minus 51 Allen 2 pot temperature. Ambient is 20 degrees Celsius. And we're going to need some more liquid nitrogen. Oh yeah, I left the lid open. I'm surprised I didn't see chat freaking out about it earlier. Let's get some more. So every now and then I'll, hopefully not during the stream, but have to refill this. It only fits 30 liters. We'll probably go through over half of it for this stream. Uh, so 2352, that was at, actually, that was at um, 54. We just crashed, though. Why did we crash? Maybe cold dug, because it was fine. 
Maybe cold bug. But at minus 72, that would not be that, uh, that cold to bug out. That number's not really that accurate. Okay, let's reboot. So we were at 54 there. I was incorrect earlier. I said 52. 54, and in which case 1.4 volts is probably more or less required. Uh, okay, so that's up from 2183 at 5.0, just for reference. Super chats, and then I'll look at normal chat. Uh, Chad Lamonds, $5. You're going to wish you would have done everything the right way. Come on, Steve, talking about how I didn't remove the uh, thermal, the VRM heat sinks. I think it's fine. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, we have a lot of work to do tomorrow, so I'm okay with skipping some steps on this one. Uh, Mustangs by Matt, $10. Normally you'd be right. $10. Good to catch a live stream. Good luck getting 6 gigahertz. I've been super sick lately, so it makes it difficult to catch the streams. By the way, just purchased a 16 terabyte iron wolf for testing, he put in quotes. Mustangs by Matt is the one who sent us this. Previously sent us another one of these. And we're not sure if they're threats yet. So Mustangs by Matt does... Uh, Works with high terabyte, high capacity drives for, I, I, I guess, your job. I'm not sure. And sometimes he has to destroy them for customers. And so his method of choice for data destruction is to shoot it. And <laughs> uh, it seems pretty effective. You can actually see, I don't know if we'll be able to get a good shot of this. Also, I need to be careful with this near live components because there's metal in it that's just moving around. You can see from this angle, kind of, the stack of platters that were all, uh, I mean, it stopped the bullet. Like, I guess, I guess if you need some makeshift armor, you could buy a bunch of very expensive 14 terabyte Seagate drives <laughs> and then just, I don't know, tape them to your, to your car, to your windows, just anywhere you can. You can even plug them in if you want to use them for storage, but that's, that's a lot of metal. It did stop the bullet. I'm not sure that Seagate advertises their drives that way. But Seagate, if you want to advertise your drives that way, uh, we can work with Mustangs by Matt to go to a range with some of them. <laughs> OK, so this is cold bugged, which means we're going to torch it. I, don't, I didn't open it up enough. OK, so we're going to torch it to heat it up intentionally. I want to bring it to about minus 50 or so. All right, that should be good. And then that'll allow it to boot again. Yep, it's even trying again. So let's let it, uh, it's just boot cycling right now. It should, I'm going to hit the safe boot button in a second. OK, safe boot. That'll wipe our settings. And it's still a bit cold, actually. We're at minus 61. So I might need to warm it up some more. Maybe not. Uh, okay, so it's trying to boot. It burns when internet protocol. You've changed your, you've changed your avatar to be a guy peeing fire. It burns when I pee. Five dollars says, if that CPU is binned, good thing Joe isn't here to drop it. That only matters if the AMD CPU is for Joe. He uh, was not kind to the pins on the 3900X. OK, so we got it to boot. I guess the explanation here is that it was a cold bug. So we, we went too cold. It wasn't happy, and it wasn't booting anymore. And uh, also froze in Windows. That was at about minus 72 on my reader, which means I probably have a not great mount or a not great placement of the thermocouple, both of which are very possible. But we'll run with it. Oh, I need to plug in the SSD. And we'll just be careful around minus 70, not to go too cold. Eric uh, Lacoste, $2 Canadian. Thank you. A cooking show. I'm currently cooking. Well, you're probably not anymore because that was almost an hour ago. <laughs> but uh, I hope you are not copying any of our methods for your, your form of cooking. Probably not very effective. Also, cooking normally involves fire, not ice. Vexed Souls, $5. What does the original Y900K top out at safely with an AIO and uh, not safely, just to max? Well, not safely on a closed-loop liquid cooler isn't too much of a concern because you're going to hit thermal limits before you hit not safe limits, for the most part. If you're on a 240 especially. If you're on a 280, uh, most of them will do 4.8 gigahertz, if not all of them. 
I'm, I'm actually referencing Silicon Lottery stats right now. SiliconLottery.com publishes their statistics. They've been and sell CPUs. And then they do this cool thing, kind of like Backblaze, the backup service. They publish their stats, which is really neat. So 4.8 gigahertz was very common. 4.9, a lot less common. I think 5.0 is like, I don't remember off the top of my head. I want to say it was, uh, I feel like it was 5%, but I'm going to say under 15% to be safe. And um, that's the 900K, so that's kind of what you can expect uh, for their testing. And that's not LN2 or anything. That's like kind of standard, stable for long-term use, actual user scenario. Let's see, next question. Devin McGinty, $20. I don't see an NVIDIA box somewhere visible on the stream. Here's $20 to offset that NVIDIA money you're probably not getting tonight. Thanks for the great content. You know, in the first quarter of your sentence, I was about to make a joke about how it's not there because we have uh, a product placement agreement with Devin McGinty tonight to, uh, to, to mention him instead, but you, you beat me to it. Yes, no, the, the NVIDIA boxes are not on this set. I don't think. There's, an, there's a couple disassembled cards, but they all really look the same right now, so we won't tell them. Uh, let's see. So I've set it to 5.4. Oh, actually, I don't know what temperature we are right now. Minus 55. Okay, that's fine. Let's not go too cold. And it is holding 5.4. Cool. That's what we want. Can you see the screen okay, Andrew? So it's holding 5.4. And uh, 2347 for that. Let's go ahead and try something more aggressive. We're at minus 61 pot temperature. And our current, uh, let's wake that up. Our current clamp will give us a reading. Let me run this. Uh-oh. Well, maybe that was the cold bug. I did just pour Allen 2 into it. And if it bugs out that, warm. I'm going to be pretty disappointed. Let's see if we can bring it back without having to reboot. Minus 58 it was alive. So minus 68 is where I froze. I don't think I actually hit apply. I was in the process of hitting apply so I don't think it was the change. Oh yeah, reset button doesn't work so that's a cold bug. So a bit of a mount issue but we'll roll with it. I guess 68 is where I'm going to stay. <laughs> Stay above. But I did just heat it up. Should be good now. Next one. Andreas Sheriff. $2. Uh, okay. 48-year-old with a slow stream. What do, you ex what do you suggest? You should say that you should call AT&T. Uh, or Time Warner. Really any of the companies. The big evil ones. And say the same thing and spend as long as possible on the service line trying to get an answer because, frankly, they deserve it. <laughs> See if you can get a medical recommendation. <laughs> Next one, JTR, $2. I'm not going to read that one, sorry, but I did see your comment. Uh, deep fried lettuce, $5. This super chat is brought to you by... <laughs> the super chat is brought to you by LTTstore.com, they said. Flamang Flamangle, uh, NOK50, best of both worlds, CPU for gaming and photo or video editing, uh, Skylake 10900XE versus 10980XE are still rising. Stability and reliability is priority number one. I think you'll be fine there for both. Photo and video editing, Ryzen's been doing well with video with Premiere. I don't know about the other applications. Okay, we're alive, cool. Uh, and... Intel is competitive in Premiere. AMD was holding a lead versus the 9900K, for example. I really can't speak to the 10 Series X uh, parts because we don't have them, can't test them right now, so I don't know the answer. I can tell you about the 9980XE and the 7980XE and those things. And um, they do scale for Premiere. They definitely, you get the core scaling for sure. And the frequency helps a lot in Premiere. <sighs> I ran single core. But what you don't get is... Um, in Photoshop, you'll actually do better with a 9900K than, than a 3900X or than a uh, probably a 10980XE if it's not of a higher frequency. Photoshop really likes frequency. So if you're in Photoshop and you kind of live there, I would say 9900K. And if you do more on maybe Premiere, 
with a little bit of Photoshop, I could still see a 9900K argument, but if you're really like heavier on Premiere, 3900X is good. 10 series, though, I can't answer that part of your question because we haven't tested it, so I have no idea. Um, but uh, we have numbers on Premiere for 7 and 9000 series X chips, if that helps at all. Intel Extreme Tuning Utility. Let's try 55 again, see if it just instantly freezes. Nope, not this time. Okay, so I think it was too cold. Yeah, okay. Let's run at minus, minus 51 degrees. We'll s oh, damn it. It's going to be a really fine line today, I think, for what this thing will run at. Oh, it's not dead, though. That's good. Okay. 55x. We're at minus 60. Let's try that. That is definitely colder than it was. So that might help us out. Oh, it got further. I know this can do 58. I might have to remount it. Let's try cold. Uh, uncorrectable error. OK. So let's do higher voltage. We'll go there first. It's probably time for higher voltage anyway. So we're currently at 1.4. Let's just go ahead and jump it up to maybe, let's try 1.43 or so, 1.425, something like that. Set. I don't know what uh, get voltage we'd have to check. Oh, wow. That's, were we really running at 1.25? Jeez. OK, well, there's your problem. The fact that it did 54 at 1.25 is pretty crazy. I think there's probably some score degradation. I'd have to go back and look at the stream archive later. But uh, yeah, I guess I didn't. I'm sure someone in chat caught that. Let's do it that way. That's because I loaded a profile previously. That should fix it up. How's chat going? Not the, not the super chats, but how's chat going? LN2 BIOS. Yes, I know. I don't have an LN2 BIOS on there. Um, I chose the 9900KS optimized consumer BIOS instead. I'm not sure if it's the best choice. But let's just push it to where it stops working, and then we can consider BIOS change. I'll go ahead and download the LN2 BIOS, though. Uh, Z390 Dark X Devs. So Tin has a site called xdevs.com. He is an engineer at EVGA, and he's got uh, unofficial BIOSes over there, including the XOC BIOS. I think we want guides, and then we want Z390 Dark. Yep, there it is. And then we want XOC BIOS, which he will have. In the meantime, we'll get this running, see if it's better with more voltage. <laughs> that was definitely a problem. OK. So did it apply? my first question. We'll test at 5.0. EVGA V core. 1.379, yes, OK. So that, that worked. All right, good. Let's give this another shot. OK, 55. Let's bring temperature down a bit. And we can look at the power numbers this time, too. It might not work. We'll see. Uh, it's about 18 amps right now. 18 times 12 will give you the power for that. So over 200 watts, a little over 200 watts, 212 or so. Actually, a little, yeah, it's around there. Close enough. And it passed, 2374. Is that what we're expecting? What I'm expecting for 55X is about 2409. So we're close. We're kind of within variance for having hardware info open. If we get rid of this, maybe that'll bring the score up a little bit. Where's that? XOC BIOS. What? XOC is not covered by the warranty? <laughs> Why not? It's covered by AMD's warranty by accident. With AMD, if you <laughs> use a CPU out of box and don't use, if you use Precision Boost Overdrive with a liquid cooler, you've exited the warranty. 
if you don't use Precision Boost Overdrive and you use the CPU stock, but you use LN2, which will give you a higher frequency than Precision Boost Overdrive on AMD, and use LN2, uh, that's technically within the warranty. So uh, that was fun. That was a good one to figure out. OK, it's working now. So we did need voltage. Go figure. Let's try 5.6. It's like it instantly dies or something. Now we're at minus 54. Kind of scared to lower it, but let's bring it down like five degrees. Okay, get it running to generate some heat immediately before it freaks out. Currently at 18 amps still, makes sense. We're at the same voltage, so not much has changed. Like 17.7. XOC BIOS is downloaded, so I will have that if we end up needing it. But if this works, I won't switch to it. Yeah, 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 fan. <laughs> I normally don't plug the fan in until I'm done with the uh, blowtorch. So now that we, I guess now that we know it's not cold bugging, because then it starts just blowing the flame, and that's not great. 24.23, OK, cool. What are we expecting for score? 24.23 at 5.6 R15. Uh, so that makes sense. Should be maybe a little higher, maybe like 2450 or something, but good enough. <laughs> I like how chat is, because of the delay on the stream, chat's still just like fan, 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 fan. <laughs> Literally the only thing in chat right now is the word fan. Okay. Let's do 5.7. Always trust chat. That's actually not true at all, but you can trust chat sometimes. Other times they they tell you that Linus dropped the screw on the floor and convince you to call him in the middle of a live stream to tell him he dropped the screw on the floor. And then and then he and I think it was Brandon. He and Brandon spent a few minutes with me on the phone looking for a screw that they had apparently dropped on the floor. But I think chat was lying. And I decided to try and help uh, Linus with bad information. Sorry, Linus. Not really. He, he, he got entertainment value out of it. OK, so it is running. We have XTU open right now, which is actually going to screw with the score a little bit. So I'll close that. OK, I'm going to run that one more time without XTU going. They're still saying fan. <laughs> All right. Uh, 60x multi. Go, go, go. <laughs> OK. They weren't lying, really? So was there actually a screw on the floor or not? I don't know if Linus ever found one. Uh, he certainly tried to make me feel bad about calling him to help. So I assumed that chat was lying. Let's do let's do higher. I should probably do like a time spy physics run or something. We're at 57 already. 58. I think this is where we're, where we're going to have problems. Minus 60 C. CPU is not really consuming much power. I, I haven't needed to pour too much. It's a couple hundred watts, which is not crazy. So I need more voltage, I think, at this point. Just to make sure it doesn't run away. One of the problems you run into with blue screens from low voltage or something is that you can get a, a, run, a thermal runaway in the inverse direction. It just starts running away cold. That's what happened when I did the stream with Jay and Kanepin, where I tripped the, the breaker right when I had the GPU at minus 125C. And because the power just stopped, there was no heat at all, it plunged down to minus 180, and it was just unrecoverable at that point. Because you, you have to warm the, the whole thing up, and it just doesn't really work out. Try 1.44. Yeah, guys, I unplugged the fan on purpose. They're like spamming fan again. I unplugged it because I just stuck fire right in front of the fan. Thank you, though. <laughs> Unless you're just typing fan for F now. Uh, OK, next one. 
Data Q, $20, thank you. That's awesome. $20 due to, not only is my still shiny Radeon 7 end of life, <laughs> sorry, overclocking has been broken at a driver level since the XT was released, five to six months. I haven't tried to overclock Radeon 7 since it came out. That's extremely unfortunate. I wish I could say I'm surprised, but Radeon 7 was such a stopgap solution. It's, I don't know. You talk about like 2070, 2060, 2080 non-super buyers and maybe feeling buyer's remorse, but at least they got almost a f like, at what was it, like eight, nine, maybe 10 months out of it before the supers? And Radeon 7 was a lot shorter than that. That was a February launch. Coo, $5. Just replaced my 2070 Super, only to get artifacts again, not the XDs. I've done everything from cables, PCIe slots, drivers, pretty sure it's the OS. Well, if you're pretty sure it's the OS, I guess the obvious question is, do you have an easy way to get another OS on there? without needing to blow away your current drive. And that would be the best troubleshooting method. But if it's not the XDs, it might not be a hardware level failure. If it's the OS, it's not too hard to check. Download Windows 10 Media Creation Tool, I guess. Buy some garbage, like $30 SSD. It doesn't need to be good. And uh, let's see if you can get it working. OK, let's see if make sure 57 still works. 57. Close. We're at minus 51 right now. So I'm gonna bring that to like minus 60 or so. All right, and now we need a thermal load right away because it's gonna start getting too cold. All right, cool. Let's see if it survives. So that's 57x, 5.7 gigahertz currently. Okay. Okay, cool, it completed. <laughs> one, of our, uh, one of our guys, Ryan, sent me a screenshot on Discord to say, I just refreshed the, screen, the stream and look what showed up. And it was just a screenshot of the Linus Honey ad that I think we've all seen at this point right before the stream. He's everywhere, can't escape him. <laughs> 58 is what we're going for. 58, please work. We're at a higher voltage now. I think I need colder. But I'm afraid to go colder without XOC BIOS. Maybe. It's hanging in there. <laughs> I'm holding my breath at this point. All right, there we go. 58, 25, 14. So 5.8 gigahertz. Uh, let's see, what did I say? 2514, okay, cool. I have a 2530 here, too. All right, sweet. Let's just try and run that again, see if it holds. We're at minus 66 degrees Celsius right now. I'm gonna try and keep it around there. And we're pulling 18.5 amps. So, Quick math on that, 18.5 times 12, 222 watts. CPU only. Cool, it's working, all right. I think I set 1.425 volts, I don't remember. 259 maybe. I'm gonna try and keep it around minus 66 or so. It's at minus, it's, it's actually right there at the moment. Nope, all right, glad I didn't pour then. Is it alive? Not recoverable? Okay. Well, it wasn't a cold issue. That's good. That makes it easier to recover from. The voltage issue, probably. So we'll try some more voltage. See if we can get to 59. Uh, Super Chat. We got Big Al 268. Good to see you again. $50. Wow, thank you. Really appreciate that. Uh, a little something for fighting the good fight by being the R&D and QA department for the industry. Love the content. Keep up the great work. Thank you. It's, um, I mean, I mean, if the manufacturers, you know, aren't gonna pay teams to do it, I guess they can just keep launching products and giving us content. I'm fine with that. I'd, I'd really prefer it if they made 
um, fewer issues before launch, but it's gotten better with some of the companies. Let's try 1.46. Uh, next one, Jim Hurley, five dollars. Without mounting hardware, what prevents the CPU socket from getting squished with that heavy pot? The mounting hardware, if anything, would pull it down a little more. So, see it plugged in. So, um, it's fine. It's pretty heavy, but it's not heavy enough to trip any like pressure sensors that some of the boards have. It's not too crazy. I would, I, I would wager it's probably less or the same force as something that's like screwed in really tight. Minos S, 100 MKD, no message, thank you. Uh, Chris Tarlane, $5, love your, oh no, it scrolled up. Come back. Tarlane. Uh, Chris Tarlane, $5, love your work. Why are you not on float plane? Like I said, too much to manage, no current plans. Uh, thank you though, Katra. Would there be problems running different fans for push-pull, Corsair LL in front for looks, Noctua is inside for pull performance? Just more noise. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a problem. Uh, push-pull isn't often super effective. It can help, it kind of depends a bit on the, the case and the radiator that you're dealing with, but the LLs aren't amazing fans, so in that instance it might help more than typically, but uh, a lot of the time, I, I would not expect a lot out of push-pull versus just push. Um, but you can definitely try it out. Uh, it's probably not something I would spend like $60 on fans for, though. Okay, let's bring it down a little. We're at minus 56. I think we were cold bugging at minus 68 earlier. And, of course, I want to push back down there, but I'm, I also don't want to waste a bunch of time with cold bugs. And I should say too, I'm not 100% sure like how accurate that thermocouple reading is because it's in there pretty good, but this is a thick sleeve thermocouple, so it might be able to go in there a bit further if it were a K-type. And um, in that instance, we might have a more accurate reading, but then it's K-type, so that's a problem too. Well, passed, passed that 58 still, that's great. Let's try and get up to 59, we're kind of close. It, it ran part of the test last time. Okay, let's bring down to minus 67. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. I was worried about that. It froze before I could even. I, it was at like minus 67 that it froze. That's annoying. So, we still haven't tried the increased voltage because it uh, cold bugged out. I was trying to change too many things at once. Oh, that was a big spike. So instead of, uh, got some Allen too. Instead of trying to change the uh, voltage and the temperature, I need to just do one, and that's gonna be just the, just the voltage. Let's not do the temperature change this time. Okay, well it's still, still bugged out, so. Hard shut down. And back in. We're at 5.8 right now, if you're wondering. Okay. All right. I'll bring that up too while we have the opportunity. So, if you're wondering, I, I had like a little bead of LN2 pop out and hit me in the hand, didn't really hurt or anything. Uh, I think everyone's seen this demo at this point, but LN2, first of all, I guess, standard disclaimer don't do this at home. Uh, if you're going to research it, but. Um, the light and frost effect is what you're seeing here where you can kind of get it, you get contact and it doesn't really hurt. It'll stain a little bit, but not in like a, a painful way. I don't really know an analog for it. Just like a, like a cold stain, but not a painful one. Um, when pain happens, when you get like actual burns, the same as if you put your hand on a stove, would be if I cupped my hand like this and poured it in my hand and held it. Because then it doesn't have anywhere to go. Uh, it's not evaporating fast enough. We're basically creating like a mini LN2 pot out of your skin. And um, so that's bad. But if it just kind of like contacts your skin, uh, it doesn't hurt. And that's also why we don't use gloves because um, with gloves, you lose a lot of the dexterity. Like typing, you can imagine, is impossible. 
handling the LN2 thermoses is more difficult, becomes more dangerous actually than without gloves in my opinion. And uh, if you get LN2 in the glove, you're in really bad shape. So the rule is just don't let it soak. And, and that's the main thing to look out for. Okay, so all we need to do is reboot this. Everything else is fine. We're 1.46 volts. What's chat saying? Other than fan. <laughs> I can unplug it for one minute. Analog, you mean analogy, lol? No. Analogy <laughs> is what you make. An analog is the thing in the analogy. Look it up. Uh, okay, so we're at 1.46 and for volts, and let's try. Let's do 57 validate again, and then try oh, or 58. I mean, yeah. Now let's just uh, yeah. Let's do. Let's just validate with 58 and get it to. Let's get it to minus 60. We're at minus 47 before I started pouring. Minus 51. Minus 55. Okay, that's probably enough. That's going to keep cooling down. So run. We're at 58. Please pass. Any reg edit tweaks to bring up the score? Uh, there is a, a lot that we could um that we could do to bring up the score uh so reg edit tweaks i'm not sure probably there's a lot of stuff in the services windows services you can do there's a lot of stuff in like background tuning that you can do using different windows versions can help but i'm not doing any of that i just kind of threw it together the answer is yes you can if you're being competitive you definitely want to use like joe will bring ssds and he'll talk about, he'll message me and say, do you have an OS? Of course, we have OSs ready on SSDs. But when you have someone like Joe talking about that, asking that question, bearded hardware, what he really means is, do you have a stripped down, lightweight OS that has all the Windows 10 BS removed and is just for overclocking? So yes, they, they definitely, when they get competitive, the guys who are more into the competitive scene, I enjoy it, but um, we're not like actually competing in any competent sense. Uh, they, they do use stripped down OSs for sure, yes. I'm only going to pour a little here. <laughs> Comment. Wow, chat is uneducated as hell, someone said. I mean, considering I'm looking at a bunch of comments, uh, we don't need to read them. But yes, you are, you are correct. Not everyone. But that is a thing. OK. More voltage. It wasn't a cold bug. That's good. More voltage. I think we need to be colder, which maybe means remount or a different BIOS. Uh, let's see. Where is Tristan? I think your name is uh, Bangert. Two dollars. You're beautiful. Thank you. SSD wired, five dollars. I just wanna kid this guy. Steve, I love you, E Steve. Steve, my my boo bear. This has gotten very strange. Uh, Robert Mal, five dollars. I usually give Linus money on the WAN show, but here's some cash. I finally caught a live stream. Hashtag Rip J. Next time you give Linus money on the WAN show. I think he reads them sometimes at the end of the show. Uh, say something about say something about how it's sponsored by GN. Next time you give him a dollar, tell him that that donation is sponsored by Gamers Nexus. I'm not going to reimburse you for it, but but it would be cool though. I mean, if you're giving him money anyway, <laughs> why not use it to troll him like he does to us? Uh, Quentin M, what do you think is better, Crack Next 72 or ROG Strix LC360 for an AIO? A lot of the AIOs are are really close. Like you're kind of talking about fan quality and uh, well, software, unfortunately. 
I hate CAM. It's it's really not great software. Uh, so, but ROG software is pretty bad too. My approach to using CLCs is like set it all through BIOS and never touch it again and forget that like maybe download the software once, write it to firmware. So the Kraken can do that. I don't know about the ASUS one. You can write it to firmware, get rid of the software, and never have to use it again. So that's nice. But um, I try to, yeah, the software is the biggest issue, I guess, these days. A lot of it's made by Ace Tech anyway. So uh, I, if I had to pick, I'd go with X72 to answer your question. OK, we are at 1.5 volts now. Oh, oops. That would have been a weird run. 59, 1.5 volts, almost out of LN2 in this thermos. OK. We're kind of stuck, but I'm hoping we can get out of this. Nope. But again, it's a stability question now. <laughs> uh, Nactua. Cam is so bad, someone says. You're not wrong. <laughs> Let's see. Trying to keep up on chat. Why not R20? R15 runs faster, and there's more data to compare it to. OK. Let's increase some voltage numbers, I guess. I missed the BIOS on that one. Um, I do have XOC BIOS downloaded. It's probably time to get that installed. I'm not sure how it behaves with the 9900KS. Is this where I need this? Yes. But, damn it. Uh, I'm just pulling the XOC BIOS. I'm not sure how it behaves with the KS. My shoe's been untied tied this whole stream. It's going to kill me. Um, but we'll try it out. My 6700K is the bottom 5%. What are the odds of it on exotic cooling being golden? It's, it's definitely possible. Like I was saying earlier, uh, bad chips on air can be good chips on LN2 and vice versa. So they, kind of, they don't behave linearly. You can have something that's really low voltage, high frequency, up until maybe 5.4.
Start streaming. <laughs> all right. I started streaming. Hopefully we're live. I restore all my tabs. I had to restart. Okay, are we back? If so, I need to tweet out for everyone who left. I think we're back. NVIDIA didn't pay the bills. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, we're back. Cool. What a pain. Okay, give me a second. Let me tweet that we're, uh, we're back live for people who missed it. Okay, uh, we are back live. Stream went down briefly. I'm not sure what that was. I think it was OBS. 74, is that the right thing? Yes, yeah, 74, okay. I think it was um, an OBS issue, but I'm not positive. Back live, okay. All right, well, thanks for sticking around. I appreciate the patience. Um, we did lose uh, most people, but they tend to rejoin pretty quickly, so still 1,500 viewers, not bad, actually, for going down for like three minutes. S Hair is tied back, serious Steve. Yes, that is what happens. That's what happens when I need to fix things in a high-stress situation. We have the XOC BIOS on here now. Let's, uh, we've got no profiles. I just checked that to make sure that it flashed properly. So it did kill the profiles, which is good. That's what I wanted, because uh, otherwise it means it didn't take. Go up to 3200 and go to extreme voltage mode on, vCore, override, 1.5, vDroop disabled. I should have disabled that earlier. Okay. I don't know if this will let us go colder than previously, but that is the hope. Uh, let me check on chat. How warm is the system now? Oh, only minus 31. Okay, we're still doing well. Okay. Well, a lot of people have come back in. Thank you for joining back. That was quick turnaround for, for people dropping in and out. Uh, I, I don't know why. It just drops sometimes. We got to fix it. Maybe I should build a new system for it, but um, it's all I want to know is the fan on. Yes, and it was on the whole time the stream was down. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so why, uh, why not use a pump for LN2 to keep a more consistent temperature? Great question. Um, it's not that easy, unfortunately, because the, the pump won't know. It solves some problems, like not going too cold or too hot during a benchmark, but what it doesn't know without some AI or programming at least is what are you doing next? So let's say in a time spy extreme, you're approaching the end of the benchmark. You really don't want to add more LN2, even though the load is going up. So if the load level is going up, you'll need more LN2 to keep the same temperature, but you want to stop pouring because if you keep pouring all the way up till the end of the benchmark, benchmark ends, and now the temperature plunges, and now you have a cold bug. So that's why it doesn't work, but we have a really cool video on um, RoboClocker. You can search RoboClocker, just like it, it sounds uh, spelled the same way. Search RoboClocker on the channel, and we did a video on what Kingpin built to accomplish what you're saying, and it worked, uh, but it did take two, <laughs> Two high-ranking, well-paid engineers who are like the best in the industry for what they do uh, to, to build a good version of what you're talking about. But it, you might enjoy it, though. OK, I'm not going to hit apply yet. Let's bring temperature back down. And that's it. Have you tried doing XOC on Linux? Good question. No, I have not, and I'm not sure. Um, what benchmarks people would typically run for that. I'm sure there's a scene out there for it, but I don't know anything about it. I do wonder if it might be easier to work with, though, without Windows as a big question mark all the time. Sometimes you just don't know if Windows is being screwy. And also stripping down Windows is, um, is, is not necessarily trivial. They, Every time they update it, they hide more BS in there. Okay. I want to see if 
we can bring this colder than previously. So I'm actually not going to run anything right now. We're just going to see if it lets us go below our... Did it freeze? No. Okay, it didn't. Very cool. I was looking at the... Forgot YouTube's on a delay. I was looking at that instead of OBS, like, uh... Seriously? Why no big and tall apparel? Yetis need Tech Jesus shirts, too. Uh, yeah, sorry. The... I know we, we do have, <laughs> whoa, Steve's taking a pee. Uh, yes, and LN2 is what came out. We do have shirts in pretty much all the sizes that we can reasonably get. So not every shirt, not every SKU is made in larger sizes, but I don't have big and tall specifically. I know that's like a, a separate thing. I could look into it one day if there's enough demand. Problem is like with minimum order quantities, it gets tricky for us because we're not like a, a huge manufacturer. I do try to, get every demographic um, so it's important that you point stuff out like that and remind me we just re-added some actually we have a shipment coming in of pretty much everything from extra small up to 6x in some designs we just restocked some women's uh, cut v-necks I think I think we have some crew cut women's as well but the the v-necks are more popular and on that note, I guess, it's still live? Yes, so far it is. <laughs> on that note, if you buy stuff on store.gamersnexus.net tonight or during November at all, we, for every item you buy, even if it's a multi-item order, we will work with Eden Reforestation Project to plant a minimum of 10 trees per item purchased. So XOC BIOS didn't fix the problems despite, despite chat's uh, insistence on it. It was worth trying. I need to go through and look and see if there's like some LN2 mode hidden in there somewhere. Let's get this unplugged for a second. Did you take a step back? <laughs> and you took a step back. He doesn't trust me. Uh, so we're stuck at 5.8. Currently, I feel like I can do it, but I don't know. I will say it's going smoother than expected. I have another CPU I can try, which would also allow us to remount it. Why not use teamtrees.org? I am not familiar with them. Their uh, price per tree was a bit high. We've worked with Eden. I'm familiar with them. Uh, spoke with them directly to ask about their overhead. They have really low overhead. They're about 10 cents to 35 cents per tree. Team trees, um, I'm not familiar with. It doesn't mean anything. It just means I don't know anything about them. And uh, Eden, I know, works with uh, Ecosia or Ecosia, however you pronounce it, the browser that does the planting trees for search phrases. So they work with Eden. And um, I like them because uh, I think they've got a good program. I've researched it pretty heavily, I talked to them directly. So I, I feel confident and working with them. Okay, well, we did get it to boot. That's, that's good. <laughs> uh, and now what I'm unsure of is what kind of voltage we're going to need. If we go too high, it's going to start getting too warm. Um, but we'll try it out. Let's see. CPU, is there any hidden thing I need to look for in here? You know who I should call is Joe if he's around. I have to always have to be careful calling Joe when we're on a stream. Don't know what he's gonna say. <laughs> Joe. Let's try calling Joe. I'll I'll put him on speaker once he if he answers. He's probably on a boat or something. Or watching the stream, maybe. That'd be good. Come on, Joe. <laughs> Answer your phone. I don't have Kingpin's number. <laughs> and he was my first choice. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> He's probably watching the stream and saw me say that. I'm not answering that guy. All right, well, let's try running with this. I'll leave, make sure my phone's on volume in case he calls back. 
Who's Joe? Joe, Joe Staponzi, a.k.a. Bearded Hardware. He has come out here a lot to work with us on uh, overclocking. He's really good. He's been doing it for a decade. LN2 overclocking, that is. So he's one of my, uh, my go-to contacts for any questions about overclocking at all, LN2 or not. So it'd be him. He kind of, Joe did original zombie board mods for video cards where he'd like bridge external VRMs onto the card. Uh, Dare Bauer is another good one to go to for help. And uh, Kanepin, of course, but he's, he's hard to reach because he, um, he's not hard to reach, but he's time limited. And Joe spends most of his time on boats. So he has, he has, a, lot of, he has a lot of time. He does call himself like Kin Slacker or something. So he's capitalized on this lifestyle. Uh, Joe does really good work. Um, I've been pushing him. I want him to do some more videos for his channel. He's he's definitely interested. He wants to come back up and do some more Alan 2. We were talking about maybe doing it for the 3950X when that comes out. Uh, or maybe Threadripper 3. But that one would be fun just because neither of us has any Alan 2 experience with Threadripper th at all, period. 3 or not. Okay. Power meter's turned off, but I can turn it on if we care. Fan, yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see, where did I stop with the Super Chats? We really need to catch up on some of these. I'm behind like an, uh, not quite an hour. I'm behind on Super Chats. Uh, here's where we stopped at some of the <laughs> X72 question, I remember that. Hi, my name is Tommy. Hello from Ireland. Hello, Tommy. I'm assuming that's your name. Uh, Pickle Click, $49.99. Wow, thank you very much for your generous uh, contribution for helping us stream tonight. Love the content. Here's some more LN2. I should answer that before I get to your question. Yeah, so cylinder of LN2, 180 liters, about, it's about 180 bucks delivered, I think. And then there's taxes on that. It's not too bad, actually, but that does help a lot, obviously. Quick question, does peripheral, especially since a lot of it leaked out earlier when I was trying to fix something. Quick question, does peripheral connection type have an effect on R15 score or stability in extreme overclocking, i.e. USB, PS2 for mouse and keyboard? So I don't know if it affects score too much. I think it might depend a little bit on the benchmark. What I do know is that on some boards, uh, maybe some CPUs, but I know for sure some boards, there can be cold issues with like USB controllers. So it helps sometimes to have PS2. This was more of like a legacy thing. But the idea is PS2 can help with uh, not freezing over and freaking out like USB controllers can sometimes. So um, that's my understanding of it anyway. But I don't know to what extent it affects score, the, the IO choice. It's a good question. I would think for some of the legacy benchmarks on old hardware, which are really popular, by the way, uh, I would think for some of those, it might start to matter more. Okay. Minus 63. Probably hit, hit run at this point. Come on. Come on. I'm trying to keep it like right at minus 65. We have about a one degree tolerance before it cold bugs. Don't do it. Don't cold bug. It passed. Was that at 59? We're not out of oxygen. I just didn't open it enough. <laughs> OK, just making sure it doesn't plunge. OK, cool. We got, is that, I, oh yeah. It, it, well, OK, 2519. I think we were at 59 for that. Oh, I think that was 59. We might have actually broken the wall finally. Score was. 25.19, wow. Well, that's lower than our 58 score. Well, I know, it's like two points, it's about the same. So maybe I was at 58. Or, oh, we had XTU running, that, that dropped the score. So let's do that again. Uh, the problem was that I, I should have torched it right at the end there. And um, uh, it ran, it passed, and then I let it get too cold. So the good news is we're running now. And I think I can get this to actually stay alive at 59. We'll try 60 next. We're close. Um, 
Nikki Kebab, I really need to catch up on these. Yeah, we are 58 minutes behind on Super Chats, but I did say 30 to 60 minutes, so. Not gonna lie, Steve. <laughs> okay, well, that's, it's a stupid comment, but whatever. Not gonna lie, Steve, you're looking thicker today than the thermal pads on the EVGA 1660 Super. That, I think, is supposed to be an insult. Brian Varley, $5. First Super Chat ever, thank you. I'm an analyst by trade, so your detailed uh, testing and analysis is great to see in this hobby. Love the channel. Well, thank you. I don't know where, uh, like what industry you do analysis on, but I know in the tech industry, it's always interesting talking to the technical anal analysts in our industry because um, you have people like David Cantor who are incredibly knowledgeable about everything architecturally, but I should get him out for an LN2 overclocking session. But he's, I don't think he's ever done LN2. And so I'll share numbers with him every now and then, talk about like, oh, we hit this frequency on this part, 2600 megahertz on 2080 Ti. And he finds that information actually pretty useful sometimes because uh, it allows them to kind of look at some projection models and, and um, try and figure out trend for performance versus frequency. Uh, so it's kind of cool to work with the analysts, but if you're in the tech industry, that's that's cool. Hopefully, see you at a trade show. Let's go up to 59. I think it passed last time. I got a little too aggressive at the end on the cold, but hopefully we can control that a little better now. I do have the fan plugged in, so everyone can stop freaking out. All right, minus 58. I'm gonna hit run at like minus 63. Is it stabilizing? We're at steady state now. Let's go a little more. Oh. All right, run. Now that we've got some power load, drop some more in there, but not too much this time. I'm gonna get the torch ready too. I don't have any background software open, come on. Go! All right, okay, cool. <laughs> The score seems a little low, but it's higher than previously, but it's lower than one of my 58s. Um, let's run it again. We needed to heat it up anyway, and it's this will do it. Let's see if a second run will maybe get us a better number. So that was 25, 27, I think. Uh, 2512, it's up and down, so we, we might have some like uh, stability issues or something, or background processes too. Let's try again. Next question was from uh, Vikram, $10, thank you. Just got a mod mat toolkit and a couple t-shirts. Wow, awesome, thank you. Uh, going to, it's a little inaccurate. Going to liquid cool my rig at the end of the month. Uh, thanks for the great work, Steve, Patrick, Andrew, anyone else at the GN team I have missed. Well, good luck with the liquid cooling. It's, um, I don't know if you've done liquid cooling before, but yeah, 2527. But it's, uh, I, I find it fun. We don't do builds with liquid cooling more than we just do benches, bench builds. That doesn't count. But you can get some really, really cool stuff done with open loop these days. And Jay's channel is a pretty good resource for seeing a lot of that new stuff. So good luck with it. I just set 60. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see. I need to write, oh, I'm glad I didn't commit to a full pour with that. That wasn't a hard crash. It was a baby crash, a little bit of a crash. We're at 60X though. Please. Come on. Trying to keep it right at minus 65. Oh, man. Non-paged area. Well, we ran 60% of Cinebench at six gigahertz. So it's possible we can do it. I feel better now than before that we can actually get this done. <laughs> Uh, maybe a little more voltage or something. It's super borderline. I'll just go ahead and tweet an update too. We just set six, that was 5.0. That would be not good. 6.0 gigahertz. The first time on our CPU, 
but it's not quite stable yet. Come check out the stream. Someone's gonna ask me what switches these are and I don't know the answer. Check out the stream, see if we can get it to stick. I feel like I need to like qualify PS their bowers better on all of these. Otherwise people are gonna be like, their bower already did this. Okay. Where's that USB stick? All right, cool. That's feeling pretty good. What's voltage at? I think it's at 1.52 and we're at like 1.3 for IO, 1.25 for SA or something. Have you tried Lumi's profile? Commando, Sam says. Uh, could help with Cinebench. No, I have not, actually. I have not tried it. Uh, go to Antarctica, it should work there. Yeah, it, um, as long as we don't cold bug, it should work there. If you live in a cold place, you can definitely do some, like, chilled water benching just outside. I've seen seen a couple videos on that. 1.535, let's try that. Uh, next comment or super chat. Menat, Mentat, tag, $2. You take a look at the uh, one US, USMUS uh, custom power plan for Ryzen 3K. Not yet. I know who you're talking about, though. I don't know how to say his name properly, but I know who you're talking about. I have not looked at it yet, but I am aware of it. Um, we're currently buried with a lot of other benchmark uh, ideas and topics. Uh, Brandon Dunphy, $10. Oh, nice. We are only 53 minutes behind. Brandon Dunphy, I saw on Wendell's video an e-bike. Oh, yeah, he had B-roll shot. Did you start to build one after riding kingpins? If so, will there be a video on the side channel about it? I want to do like a proper review someday on the main channel, maybe when there's, maybe around Christmas or something when there's, it's kind of more acceptable to have not, um, hardcore computer content, I might do one. But yeah, I did build one. Uh, we'll talk about it more in a review at some point. I hooked up a computer, like a data logger to it, and can um, log like power, voltage, uh, battery, thermals for the hub motor, all that stuff, which is really cool for kind of plotting a trend for, you know, at what throttle um, percentage, I guess, do you kind of drop voltage or increase thermals or whatever. So I did build one, yeah. And Wendell's, Wendell's video on level one text, if you want to see it, he's got it towards the end of that video. Uh, not quite as fast as Kingpins, but pretty fast. OK, it's about 48 miles per hour. OK, did I get a message on Discord or something? Richie, set display for core temp or bring up real temp. You may be getting positive at 1.525 without a strong mount and minus 60 C pot temp. So that's a good point. Let's do that. Richie C is one of our Patreon members on the Discord and has uh, done some LN2 work. Oh, oh no, wait. OK, I misread that. I just saw 100. I was like, oh god, we're, we're pegged to 100. This is a terrible mount. But it's core distance from TJ Maxx. So that's actually fine. Uh, but he has a really good point, and what I should do is run it, and let's run it at a known stable, like 5.7. Run it known stable, and see if we go positive. That would that would definitely be a cause for crashing. And at the voltage we're at, we we don't want to go um, positive on temperature for the core. And I don't have the pot like pulled down really tight on the CPU, so Richie's got a good point. Run. Oh yeah, it is actually positive. It's not like crazy, but for, there's a massive delta there, so we should remount probably. Huh, I don't think I have a great way to secure it other than zip ties around the entire board. But we were at like 11 degrees, which against the 65C, minus 65C pot temperature is pretty high. So, we want to keep that below zero. I'm thinking a quick remount. Uh, thank you, Richie C. Good advice. Uh, Brown, Bronwyn SoCal gal, five dollars. 
Any news on the 2080 Ti successor? Uh, no, I have not heard anything about that. And I'm not being coy or anything. I'm not under any embargoes. I haven't been briefed on anything. To my knowledge, there is no successor, but I mean, there will be at some point, obviously. I just don't know if it'll be named 2000 series or not. So no, I have no information for you. I also don't know if there have been any rumors on that lately. I don't really follow rumors too much. What we report in the news, um, Eric will find all of that and give it to me, but I don't actually know anything beyond whatever he, uh, he finds for news videos. So no, I have not heard anything about a 2080 Ti successor. Next one, I'm just gonna remount this, which means I need to warm it up so I don't like burn my hand from the ultra cold. Next one is from Technic 2K. Uh, 499, thank you. For your bravery working with liquid nitrogen in the open. It's really not that hard. It was a, it, This is a lot easier than chilled water. Like, way easier than chilled water. Uh, bowl, gerbil, $2. Vapor fan, question mark. Yeah, we got that. Dominic Clare, $5. Thanks for the stream. I'm about to buy a 2080 Super to match my new 9900KF. What's your budget recommendation? Uh, 2045 in Austria, alarm is at 6 a.m. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so if you've gone to bed at this point, sorry for getting back to you late, but uh, 2080 Super to match your KF. <sighs> I haven't looked at the Supers too much, but they're all basically the same as the 2080s. The XC Ultra is pretty good. It's a little bit on the, the fat side. It's like almost three slots, so that's the biggest downside of it, but I feel pretty okay about that one, though. Uh, Flamangol, NOK200. Follow up on the 10980 XE. I run Linux, so Adobe is a no-go anyway. DaVinci Resolve and GIMP or Darktable and Steam games used, based on what we know, 10-core versus 18-core Intel. Games run smoother. Games must run smoother than my 7700K. Yeah, probably. Uh, I don't know. I, I really, again, I haven't tested the 10 series. So unfortunately, I just, I, I, I can't really predict it. And I don't, I don't test DaVinci Resolve either. So probably what you should do, because we're not going to have a benchmark for you for DaVinci Resolve, you should go to techgauge.com. He's a, a friend of ours. He tests DaVinci Resolve, mostly does articles. And when that CPU comes out, take a look at his articles and see if it answers your questions. Um, OK, so we don't need to do like a full breakdown unless it's got water on it. But we do need to figure out a better mounting solution with some more pressure so that, uh, so that I don't have this thing going positive when we are, it's got ice on it. Let's not put that on the motherboard. Um, when we're running 1.525 volts. So that's the, the problem right now. I think we're good on water, though. There's definitely ice build up on the back, but it's not too bad. I don't think I have mounting hardware for this. I kind of do. That's really going to suck to install. <laughs> um, OK, well, how many viewers do we have? I had a lot of other stuff I needed to do tonight, but we've, we'll try it. Let's just try and get six. So I'm going to try and do this quick and efficiently, and if it doesn't work, then we'll call it. But what I'm going to do is hack together a mounting solution to get some pressure on uh, the LN2 pot. We're going to just hack this all together really quickly and hope it works. And if it does, then great. We won't be going positive anymore, so we'll be able to um, try and hold 6 gigahertz. And if it doesn't, then that's fine. We got 5.9. But what I'm going to do is just get some uh, threaded rods and attach them to it and then uh, see if that'll work. I need a dust can. Let me grab a duster from the other room. I'll be right back. Just need to blow the ice out of the socket. Okay. All right. Ice is out of there. 
Back's actually not too bad. Vaseline got us pretty well covered. I should probably repaste or re um, revast that, but just the metal's wet. That's fine. Cool. Okay. 5.9 is not 6. <laughs> Did you do a fan close up? Oh, nice. <laughs> fan is off. Yes, they're saying the fan is off. <laughs> I'm grabbing threaded rods from another room. I'll be right back. Okay. Let's try it. I think we can hack this together to work. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna try and do this quickly. Steve, did you say extra small will be back? In stock soon. All I've ever seen is small. Uh, close to placing an order soon, so I'd love to know for sure. I know for sure we have small coming in. We actually, uh, Samozi, Sam, um, we have, we do have some old extra small of the foil shirts, actually, like maybe two of them. And they're probably, they're never going to be sold. And uh, they were extras. We ordered a couple extra of every size, just in case. Like, I, I really didn't want to be in a situation where maybe USPS loses it in the mail or something, and then someone doesn't get their limited shirt. That would suck. So we ordered two extra of every size for backup. And I gave a, away the extras. We sold some of the extras back when we reopened. But the extra small is never sold. So I think we still have some of those. I don't know if there's extra smalls coming in stock in this next order for the current designs, but I'm pretty damn sure we have some foil ones. Um, send an email to me uh, for the person who was asking about extra small. Send an email. Really should email support at gamersnexus.net, but copy team at gamersnexus.net. So email support at gamersnexus.net, copy team at gamersnexus.net, and just tell them that Steve said to send an email about extra small shirts, and then I'll make sure I follow up. And if I don't, then the support guy will ping me and make sure I do. So we can we can help you get uh, an extra small. Okay, I'm just adding some back there because I had dried it off. Um, okay, so how much of this do we want sticking through? So the more that sticks through, the more of a pain it's going to be to bring down the top end. I think we need more than that going through. So. This is going to be four threaded rods, and then we'll put the the beast pot on top of that. Oh yeah, barely fits. Nice, perfect. Get it out of there. I think that will work. Might need some more more exposure through there. Really want to hit six, so I guess this will kind of close the storyline on that if we can. Um, check chat. Are there shirts for toddlers? Well, depends on if you mean mentally <laughs> or physically. If you mean mentally, uh, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Joe and I would fit in the for toddlers category sometimes. So yes. I do Ojo a shirt though. Uh, okay, so Super Chats, that's what I was gonna check while I do this. Let's see. Where were we? Got you, got Brandon Dunphy, got Bronwyn, got Technic, Dominic Claire, okay. Uh, T Meister, Inspector T, five dollars. Do super chats count toward Eden Reforestation Project? No, that is a run we're doing for November. We arranged it with Eden directly. We have like a contract with them, made it all official. So what we're doing with Eden is strictly for every item, it is ten trees minimum planted, working with our distributor in Eden, and that's every item per order. Uh, and then for if you want to give it to them directly, we have a match set up where we'll match up to fifteen hundred dollars. And that's Eden Projects, let me double check this, 
Edenprojects.org. Eden Projects with an S at the end, dot org slash gamers nexus. If you wanted to donate to them directly, you could do that there. And then we'll match up to 1500 of what our viewers give. Um, so you can, if you, if you want to contribute more, you can do that through that method. Okay. I'll need two more of these. This one doesn't have anything on it, any mounting hardware on it currently. But they do have Vaseline on them from the AMD 3900X. So they are still, still hard to work with. Okay. So this one is going to go through here, and this through here, and then let's, this is going to be a, such a pain to do. Um, I need to get some of the ice off of this thing. Oh, it's still frozen. It's going to be kind of hard to clean the thermal paste off when it's frozen solid. Let's see, it's chat saying. LN2 pot needed more pressure before attempting six gigahertz. Well, more pressure will probably help, yes. But I didn't really have an easy way to do that, so we just ran with it. So you could see kind of like, can I kind of hack something together? Roman got his working at six without any pressure, but I think he was more stable at five, five eight. Okay, that's looking good. Cool. Seems good. Just clearing the area of ice now. All right. Uh, so I need to expose the screw points, screw holes. Let's do this over here away from the power cables. Dang. Okay, that was definitely a good decision because that was a lot of ice. And it's extremely cold still, like painful cold. Uh, gloves in this instance would actually be good. Okay. All right, cool. Thermocouple's still in there. Tape's not doing so well, though, but that's fine. Uh, all right, so let's try mounting. Actually, I'm still going to need that. I might need an extra hand here. I'll let you know. This needs to come out here. And then this. Where is it? Is it Joe messaging me? Can you see what I'm, uh, is, is it just sitting on these? Oh, oh yeah, that's what it was. Okay. Andrew just put his coat on. <laughs> if you're wondering if it's cold in here. Okay, cool. So we can actually get this done. Fan, fan. System's off right now, guys. <laughs> Trying to do multiple things at once. Uh, NA, $5. Currently have a 3900X at 4.4 to 4.7 turbo, I assume. Yes, that is what that is. Uh, if I upgrade to a 9900K or something similar, would I see a significant performance improvement? What was it? 3930K. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you'll see. You'll definitely see a performance improvement, especially in things that can benefit from newer instruction sets. But um, I don't have the 3930K in our benchmark. It's probably the best thing to do is go look up 3930K benchmarks and figure out what it was similar to that is in our charts, like maybe a 3770K or whatever it was called. And then you can compare the delta between 3930K and that, and then compare that in our charts to 9900K. That would get you an approximation of kind of the performance uplift. Just because a lot of people don't do 3930K benchmarks today. So um, that's the best way to like kind of roughly figure out where you would be is to just do it do like a delta. Okay. <clears throat> so paste is it, uh, I don't want to touch that. It's probably still cold. Let's do paste. And 
then we can get it mounted. Yeah, oh yeah, it's definitely still cold. It is not too happy about spreading. Okay. Is it Joe? Joe normally sends messages in that pattern, specifically. Oh, it is Joe. I was riding the board over to a place to watch the football game. Well, Joe, I need help, damn it. <laughs> this is more important. Uh, I might call him back once we get this actually like in BIOS to a point where he can actually provide some ideas. <laughs> Joe and his boosted boards and his all his toys. He's got some cool stuff. He's got, uh, he's probably talking about his electric skateboard. He told that story on stream previously, actually, about how he got off the plane at CES <laughs> uh, in Las Vegas at CES and rode his boosted board from the airport to his hotel instead of taking a cab. And when he, he was towing his luggage the whole way, like it's got four wheels on it and he's got it next to him like this while riding at 22, 25 miles an hour. Blew up one of the wheels in transit on the luggage, fortunately, not the board. And uh, that's how Joe gets around at trade shows. This is kind of a pain to do when the CPU is like frozen. Uh, okay, we're almost there. One piece in the corner. Okay. That's pretty good, I think. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm being OCD about it. The uh, edges could use some more coverage. Just trying to make this like the final attempt tonight, so I might as well really put some effort into the mount. Uh, okay, and then we will clamp down the Allen 2 pot this time, which is gonna be a pain as well because these aren't really, what I need is like the wing nut style screws. You can spin them a lot faster, but we'll just go with these. Okay. Nope, I just messed it up. All right, now I'm, now I'm happy with it. Nope. <laughs> okay. All right. This thing can go on now. Mm. Man, Andrew, I think I will probably need some assistance lining up the um, the threaded rods. Actually, I'm gonna need to remount this thermocouple first. Wow, that tape really did its job. Remount the thermocouple. You'll use a thinner one. Um, no. Let's get this back in. Down here. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that, I think, as long as it stays. And I need to tape it again. It's a slow process, guys, but. We're just going to try for six one last time with this, with the pressure. Richie was right that it, um, it was close, but it was going positive once we tried six. This tape's not going to like this. This Allen 2 pot is still like for sure below zero. It's painful to <laughs> touch for too long, but I'm just trying to hold that thing on well enough. That noise is probably not pleasant in the mic either. Uh, Super chat. Manat, uh, oh, I got yours. Uh, there's another one, though. Timothy McDonald. How bad is it to run a PC off of a generator? I use a UPS to help cover over undervolt. I have no idea. That's a question for, like, Johnny Guru or something. We need a um, rubber band, I think. Yeah, I have no idea 
if <laughs> like UPS is a good idea. Um, generator is not something I've ever even thought about for PCs, man. Let me get an extra hand in here. <laughs> so, oh man, if you can just get this rubber. Never mind. <laughs> I will need help with the rest, though. This is really not a process that should be done with a frozen container. Spraying water everywhere. OK, can you uh, kind of hold these um, like straight? So I, c I guess we'll start with two on one side and then get the others. And I think, I think it is agnostic. OK. If you can, um, we're going to go for the outer, these holes right here. It should like thread into something. There it goes. Might have to take two of these out maybe. Is that one lining up? Oh, I see. The rubber band is preventing it. Yeah, okay. Try that. There's ice in the hole. <laughs> Get it? Okay, there. It'll be a little sideways, I guess. All right, cool. I think that's the best we can do. So I can get, can I get, yeah, let's diagonally mount this. Um, so what we'll do is Remove these two. Can you uh, pull the one that's towards you, like closest to you, pull it up? Yeah, I'll let those two fall out. And yeah, okay, cool. Okay, let's see if we can get it diagonally mounted. This uh, Allen 2 pot doesn't have the correct mounting spacing for for this socket, so we're just gonna jerry rig it. So, which one are you lining up to? That one? one? Okay. So I have to be here to hit that one. Let's try the other one, maybe. No, that's not, the other one's not gonna work. Should I try to hit the top one? Uh, yeah, wherever it lines up, doesn't matter. No, or maybe, maybe. Oh, the ram. Why? Oh no, it's the ram. Oh. Is it hitting it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. One more change of plan. We'll do what I did with Ryzen. We'll do um two on one side, <laughs> and then zip ties, I guess. So. If you can realign that one, Here. yeah. And if this doesn't work, then we'll, call, we'll do the rest of the super chats and end it. I need to get Roman to send me the other mounting hardware. Okay. Unless we can maybe do it that way, I guess we could rotate it. Maybe it fits if it's rotated, actually. Let's, me let's measure it. Uh, ruler. Yeah, sorry, I'm not engaging chat right now. We're just going to figure this out uh, mechanically and then keep going. Eight center to center. Ten and a half center to center. Oh, that's not either of those numbers. Seven and a half. Uh, maybe. Hmm. That might be eight. What was eight? This eight. Okay, one more attempt uh, rotated this time. 
So let's get those other two threaded rods back in there. Got it. I'm sure this is like riveting. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's see. We didn't try it this way, right? No. Let's try this. I'm going for the outermost. Mm, I don't know about that. Oh, man. The line up at all or no? I can almost get it into this one. Okay, let's try that. Let's try just two. I think it'll work with two. Might have to get these other ones out of here again, but. Yeah, that has to. I think it can, it's like the rod is too fat for this LN2 pot. <laughs> like, I think if we pull, so is that, it's on that side? No, not yet. But it can be, you think? I think so. If it can be, we can pull the other two out. Which one? That one? Yeah. Okay. That'll work. Let's pull the, uh, from my perspective, top left and bottom right. Oh my god. Wait, I'm stuck. Sending some ice flying. Now we're just playing with water at this point, so it's gonna be a question of if something shorts and dry it off. Okay, now it's dry. Alright. Is chat like freaking out? Use a dumbbell weight. <laughs> uh watch out. Okay, let's try it this way. <clears throat> new rods with new threads now. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, definitely not like, <laughs> not meant to be used this way. And it's super, Super wet now. Not the best. But I'm just going to try and freeze it over. What do you think? Maybe? Uh oh. Okay, got it. This should go in. Got it? Got water on my hand. Oh, <laughs> that's not gonna, yeah, that's like bending out. No, that's not gonna work. There's no way. Okay, all right. Uh... <laughs> Just drill the right holes into the motherboard. Yeah, that, that'll do it. That's the J approach, right, from years ago. Drill the holes into the board. Okay, let's get the drill out. So is it gonna fit with two on one side? I think maybe. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. You don't why well, Vaseline or thermal face? Andrew has to wash his hands, he'll be right back. Even though he's probably gonna have to help with this. Okay. I need to send Roman like this clip and say, this is why you need to learn how to use the postal system and <laughs> send me the, the mounts and adapters I need. Yeah, I know Derbauer didn't secure it, but he was running dry ice and lower voltage. 
which is uh, I, we didn't secure it either for the first ninety percent of this stream. That's, no, this is like stupid at this point, I think. I can't really tell if it's on the CPU or not. <laughs> Maybe it might be on the CPU. I think this is probably worse than my original. Tweezers, someone says tweezers. Okay, I, uh, yeah, I could drill, like, bigger holes in the LN2 pot, but, ha, 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 zip ties, I guess. It's just, it seems like it, nothing's going to work at this point, because if I do, that was a good mount, <laughs> if I do zip ties, that wasn't bad. Okay, well, maybe that'll work. Oh, that's a lot of water. Yeah, no, we're going to call it. There's too much water. Something's going to die if I if I push it, uh, even though I really want to. Like, I don't mind spending the time on it, but there's so much water right now that if we power this thing on, I think something's going to short. Because <laughs> not all of it is insulated, and we just dripped water all over it. So, all right. Could have made that work, but uh, definitely it's better to just break it down and um, uh, yeah, someone's saying unless the mount is flat, you're better off with no pressure. I agree. So originally we ran it without any security, just sat it and it worked pretty well up until six gigahertz at 1.525 or whatever it was. And then we were going positive on temperature. So I think it's the right move to not try and remount that. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm too, he says, heat that pot up, slacker. Yeah, <laughs> Joe. Um, I think we're going to we're gonna call out of that because there's too much water and I don't want to kill parts. So what I'm going to do is get through the super chats. Thank you for your patience. We did 5.9 today and the scores topped out at about, where is it? Uh, highest one was about 25.30 CBR15. And so we next... Um, Next, need to figure out like the mount. I could try different CPUs as well uh, and get a different CPU on there with potentially a lower voltage to hit those higher frequencies. But I really want to do it now. If we weren't dealing with water, I would. I just, it's, it's not worth killing expensive parts. They're not going to replace them. So, uh, okay, let me do the rest of the super chats. This will take a little bit, I think. Um, let's see, where did I stop? CC, $5. What's it like to work for Steve? Are you a hard taskmaster or a, a lax dude bro type of boss? Andrew, uh, do you think lax dude bro <laughs> is an inaccurate description? Uh, those are both very extreme. <laughs> Andrew says those are both very extreme. There's your answer. I don't know. I, my goal is like, do one thing at a time. I try not to split too many tasks up. So we generally try to focus on one thing at a time, get it done. More effective that way. Josh Belmont, uh, $2. What's your favorite Linus distro? Not Linux distro, but Linus distro. I have to say the Linus distro from, from the kitchen is probably the favorite Linus distro. If you're asking Linux, I have the most experience with Ubuntu. Uh, Bronwyn SoCal Girl, any news on the 2080 Ti successor? Got your question already. Uh, Austin Porterfield, $5. XFX RX 580, 8 gigabyte GTS Black. This card gives me 3 to 25 seconds of black screen randomly. Well, that's part of, that's a feature. It is called the GTS Black after all, and it's supposed to give you 3 to 25 seconds of black screen. You're saying if there's a reason, uh, I don't know why. So, I would say, hmm. It could be drivers, it could be memory. <laughs> I don't know, 580s, it could be a lot of things. I've seen that though. So yeah, I don't, there's a lot of options. Uh, maybe RMA it. 
Brandon Stubbs, $5. I love it when I buy an Intel K processor, I'm paying extra to avoid the warranty. Yep, that's accurate. Uh, but you do that with AMD too. You do, you do avoid the warranty pretty quickly, like by enabling PBO. Tristan Bongert, Steve, in Ryzen Master, my EDC is packed at 100% and it's limiting the OC I can apply on the 2700X. When I ordered the X570 Crosshairs 8 to replace my 470, uh, oh, you ordered one. Will this fix my issue? To fix your issue, you need to go into BIOS and find the power settings. Um, for 3000 series, at least, they're under PBO for EDC. And uh, disable all the power limits, and then that'll fix the issue. Uh, Daijobu, fan, question mark. Nope, not anymore. JOJ, 1337 uh, RUB. No message. Thank you, and thank you for 1337. I, I hope I hope people remember what that means for the rest of my life. Tyler Weatherington, five dollars. Building a machine for music production, multi-core performance, and gaming. Should I go with a KS Threadripper or Cascade Lake X processor? I don't know because I don't know. We don't test anything to do with music production, so um, <laughs> I have no idea. If gaming is in your list and it's important, I'll give you a bit of an answer here. If gaming's important, I would not go with Threadripper. Uh, I would go with a KS or a 3900X or something like that. Once you start piling on the cores, even with the X series stuff, the high core count X series stuff, you definitely get degradation of performance and not just diminishing returns, but like hard negatives. So with too many cores, like with a 2990WX, you're way worse off than a 3900X. But uh, it depends on how, how important gaming is to your performance workloads. If it's not that important, then you go with higher core count and that's just disable cores when you need to for gaming. Brian Jones, $10. All GPU card tests seem to be done with an open air test bench. Could positive pressure make a significant difference with a loud and hot blower type card? Not really. Um, you'll see a difference for those in something like a server chassis where you're forcing air into it at, at stupid high RPMs. Jake Jefferson, $10. Quick maths. Thank you. MRX Starwind 199. Look up the Intel terahertz patent. What? Intel terahertz. Oh, it's thin. Uh, was Intel's new design for transistors. Uses new materials as a superior insulator, reducing current leakages. Uh, one element of this structure is depleted substrate transistors which is a type of CMOS device where the transistor is built in an ultra-thin layer of silicon on top of an embedded layer of silicon. I've never heard of this, but thank you for bringing it to my attention. Robert Mal, $2, will do. By the way, dro you dropped the screw. Nope. Emiliano Sandler, uh, 150UYU. Here comes my UWU money. Uh, don't you have a Linus Tech Tips bottle for the LN2? Probably, actually. I'd have to go look. Clint Chilmore, 999. Uh, I aspire to be like you. That's a scary phrase. Don't don't spend like 30 minutes on stream trying to make a soaked Allen 2 pot fit on a board. Uh, I'm going to school for software engineering. Keep doing what you do. Well, thank you. And uh, software engineering is a massive field. It's so FPGAs and software are both doing really well right now. So you, you have plenty of options there. Uh, Mentot Tag. Steve, can you look into the uh, Ryzen Power Plan just released? Yes, I saw your message earlier and reply to it. Kondeka, $2. We're just going through all the super chats here. Uh, F, yes. JDM Turbo Outlaw. I'm donating $5 for NVIDIA boxes to be put in the background. I hope you send an invoice to NVIDIA for the $4.99 that you sent. OK, there's your box. <laughs> Hijinx, $2. Should have used more fans. Um, where'd it go? There it is. How far are we from the bottom? Okay, we're not too far. This is actually achievable. That's good. Liquid Exodius, two dollars. F. Yes, F indeed. Uh, Five point nine gigahertz, not bad. I'll go. Th I'll recap it at the end in a few minutes here. Uh, Roberto Tavares, five dollars. Just picked up a two hundred dollar ten seventy Ti, and I'm deciding if I should strap an AIO to it. Would a one twenty be okay, or should I bump it to a two forty? One twenty is okay for that. 240 will let you run quieter fans. 120 will be acceptable. Uh, if you really care about noise, go to 240 and lower the fan speed. 
Clint Chilmore, 199. Try deleting System 32. Don't think that would help. Draco Nightwalker, $1. Thank you, no message. Uh, Nikki Kebab, $5. Ah, uh, yes, the second coming of Tech Jesus. I'm not sure. That was at 8, 12 p.m. I don't know what we were doing then to get that reference. Chad Lamans, $2. Is, what, is that where you spliced in the pre-recorded part? Oh, where the... Uh, stream died. Yeah, that's that's where we we went from live to pre-recorded there seamlessly with just four minutes of downtime. Uh, Julius Tressard, should I upgrade from an 8600K for 1080p 144 hertz? Mm, yes, for most games. I'm going to go with yes. i5 8600K is you can do 144 at 1080 with lower graphic settings uh, if you have a GPU constraint. But if you throw like a, a 2080 or 2080 Ti or something in there, then you should upgrade the CPU. I'm going to go with yes for my answer, though. Because um, some of the games, you'll have like worse frame time consistency. So even if you can hit the 144 average, your frame time consistency might not be great with the i5s in some games. Far Cry 5 stands out. Not that that's relevant, but other games will, too. Reviewing, playing, and more RPM. $10. Like you can't have seen. Always an amazing guy. I must be referring to when we were talking about Joe or Kingpin earlier. Chris Wen, five dollars. An HD fifteen versus Kraken X sixty two for a thirty nine hundred X. Well, if you have the space, the D fifteen is uh, competitive with the X sixty two. They're not that far off from each other. The I don't know. It's it's like a space thing. I think mostly. X, the D15, I think, is a bit cheaper on average. I'm partial to the X62s because we use them for our test benches, and I like how easy they are to mount and unmount. But the D15 is good and cheaper, I think. Uh, James Hogg, $2. 3,720, 80, 360 front rad, 120 rear for a closed top and a closed top, question mark. Yes, yeah, so if you do front intake and rear exhaust, in some instances, closing off the top, if that's the question, uh, will definitely benefit you because then uh, otherwise what happens is the air coming in from the front will find the first escape path and that's going to be up and out and then of course the rest of it will go through the rear exhaust but if you close off the top you can create more of a tunnel and sometimes it's better sometimes it's worse it's it depends on the case Robert Rhodes uh, Tech Jesus comes back from the dead after only three minutes take that real Jesus <laughs> I th I'm not going to I'll make people mad if I say anything about that in either direction. Josh Belmont, $2. You forgot the fan. Fans, it's, um, no, it's been working this whole time. Uh, I don't want to waste this on that. Dumb question. This is from, oh, no, wait, we have a couple more before that one. It burns on internet protocol. $5. Steve Bilzer was saying to use Lumi's LN2 profile and it will fix the CVB. Okay. I will do that next time. Thank you, Bildzoid. Sean Newby, $5. We'll be setting up a 9900KS system tomorrow. Nice. Uh, check the, um, try to tune the voltages down if you can. A lot of the boards will run aggressively high auto. McJazz TV, 199. Asus Strix 2080Ti or EVGA XE Ultra can't decide. EVGA XE Ultra. The Strix 2080 Ti, I never was able to put together the content piece, but when we first tested it, it had really horrible VRM temperatures. They might have fixed it by now, but um, I, didn't, I didn't like what I saw back when I worked on it. Uh, two hertz, five dollars. Dumb random question, is the Core i7-6800K still worth buying? And if you know how much it can overclock. I don't know off the top of my head, and no, it is not still worth buying. Otto Elias, Elias and SEK, $20. What fan is this? That is a Corsair. Maglev 120 fan. Seb G, hi from France. I think we are, yes, okay, I can see the bottom now. There's maybe 15 or so, or if you're, hi from France. Hi, Seb G from France. Uh, Andrew Cootie, 499, unrelated Q&A. What are your thoughts on a 3700X with a 570, XY70, and 2070 Super setup? Currently running 2600X, P450, and 1660 Ti. That's definitely a pretty fast upgrade. Uh, most people average like a three-year upgrade cycle, but there's nothing wrong with that. Um, that's a good build. X570 is unnecessary, though, unless you have a specific need for it and you know what that need is. Like, if you know 
that uh, you're going to be pushing PCIe Gen 4 SSDs, I guess. I would just go X470 or even B450 with a good board, and don't waste your money on X570 unless you know you need it. And you will know if you need it. Wishbone, $2. Beetle Adventure Racing in 4K 60 FPS at 6 gigahertz. Maybe next time. Michael Martin, to keep trying. $2. Big up to my homie watching the stream. Well, Michael Martin's homie, big ups. Uh, Crest Star Gaming, $2. 2080 Ti Doomsday Edition. Not sure what that's a reference to. Uh, Manitou Black, $3. Will you ever buy a teleprompter? We technically kind of have one that I use for one video. I don't like them. They feel like super unnatural, and I think it removes, because it's scrolling, it removes any ability to deviate from script, so it becomes less relatable, and I can't like interject with thoughts that I come up with on the spot. Uh, Great Wood, $5. Will the 9900KS actually eclipse the 3950X, or are we comparing apples to oranges? In gaming... It's the KS will probably maintain a lead, almost certainly. In production, it'll depend on the application Photoshop. Intel's probably still ahead. Premiere, the 3950X should assuredly be ahead. So it just depends on the application. But yes, sometimes no, other times. I gave you some, some examples there. Uh, Alan Leslie, got a deal on an X299 Dark. I've not bought the CPU yet. Any of the X series that you would use for an all-arounder? I liked the 7980XE a lot, and it's $1,000 now, but you shouldn't buy it because um, the new stuff coming out is also $1,000 for an 18 core, in theory. So, all around, or if you have the money, that I mean, like, that 18 core CPU is a lot of fun to play around with. I enjoyed it. It doesn't mean it's good value necessarily, but it's a lot of fun. Um, for a more, like, uh, uh, generalist CPU, the 10 core looks promising, but we need to test it. Josh, Josh Belmont, love the Linus 2, uh, RIP LTT 2, I guess, overclocking streams. Yes, we need to get Linus out here probably someday and do something like that. Ryoku has to, $5, we have maybe six, seven left. Just overclocked 3700X, but my 165 hertz monitor backlight just died. RMA in the works, wish me luck. <laughs> yeah, RMA suck, and RMAs for monitors really suck. They take forever to get another one back. Uh, hopefully they work faster for you, though. Kenneth... Malinich, $5. My daughter, Quinn, is due to be born any moment now. Jeez, here's to hoping she thinks these kind of experiences are as cool as I do. Wish me luck. She's going to come out and be like, no, he was supposed to do 1.545 volts for 6 gigahertz. I've been listening this whole time. They did it all wrong. Let us know. Let us know if she has the answer for why, why we couldn't quite do 6. Uh, congratulations. Eric E., $20 Canadian. Um... That was 24 minutes ago. My, that, that kid might have been born by now. Uh, good stuff with the Eden Project. Have you tried downhill on a snowboard instead of a bike? No, actually I have not. Uh, snow sports are not, it's too cold, I think is the problem with them. So I, I have not tried that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, no more super chats. Don't send any more. I won't read them. Uh, we're cutting it off now. Let's see. Put some holes in the pot and come back later. Yes, that would be the solution, I think, the easy one. Obscure Paradox. If you have a G-clamp in the office, use that. Uh, yeah, it's too, like I said, too wet. Ali Musavi. Should I upgrade from a 6850K to a 9900KS for gaming? I'm all about max FPS. Yeah, if, if that's what you care about and you're trying to do like 1080p super high frame rate, then you, you well, you don't need to do a KS. Just do a 9900K and then set it 5.0. Nori SS, $5. Snowflake attacking inanimate objects for two minutes, episode two, ETA. I can do that. Uh, on the GN Steve side channel, there's that video, episode one, I guess. We can do another We can do another one of those. Pilot Light, $1. Thank you, no message. JDM Turbo Outlaw, last two. This $2 sponsored by LTD. Uh, Pilot Light, can you do a case review of the old NDXT Phantom? There were a lot of Phantoms, but I think I know the one you mean. And uh, I don't think so. Like, if there's a specific reason to revisit it someday, we can. But it's not really available on market anymore, so. Okay, quick recap. Um, <laughs> I love how everyone thinks he's an extreme overclocker. Only he watched some streams nowadays. So first of all, I don't think anyone thinks I'm an extreme overclocker. We, uh, 
pretty clearly at the beginning and throughout the video talk about how someone like Dear Bauer does this a lot better. But it does show that you can get into this stuff without having like an unachievable level of knowledge on the subject. It's more about, you don't even need a lot of money. You can buy used parts. Like there's a big scene for, for old hardware overclocking. That's not that, ex it depends. Some of it's really expensive, but a lot of it's not that expensive to get into. So you don't even need a ton of money. The most expensive stuff's gonna be like an LN2 pot if you use liquid nitrogen. Um, so that kind of sucks, but try and find a used one on eBay maybe. But uh, yeah, no, we t I just hack around with it. Definitely not a pro. Uh, okay, so recap, we did 5.9, but the score was a bit low, I think. So 5.8, we had good scale and good efficiency to 25, 30 points, CBR 15. And we need the Lumi, uh, I guess, BIOS that, or, or whatever, um, I'm not sure if it's a profile or what, but that uh, builds what it was recommending to try and fix cold boot bug. That was our biggest limiter today. If I could have brought it down to full pot, like minus 180, I think we would have had 6.0. But it sounds like I just need to download that and give it a shot next time. Uh, so yeah, 58, 59, X, and that's where we stop for now. I am going to close this out. We have a lot to do. Oh, Epos Vox just joined and said, hi, Senpai. Sen uh, hey, Epos Vox. If you don't know who he is, he does good streaming videos on YouTube. Okay, I'm going to close out now. Um, thanks for watching. We have a lot of stuff we're working on this week. It's going to be extremely busy and encourage you to check back for it. I have two more videos with Wendell that are done and ready to go up. One is on an Epic server. The other one is NAS build part two. And uh, also, like I said, all through November, we have the... Uh, the organization, the effort going on with the Eden Reforestation project. We're doing 10 trees per GN item sold through store.gamersnexus.net. Or you can just go to Eden Project with an S.org slash gamersnexus. And we have a donation page if you just want to give them money for trees. Uh, they have really low overhead, about 10 cents to 35 cents per tree. And um, we're doing a match on that page. So uh, check all that out. Thanks for watching. 59, 5.9 gigahertz, stop just shy of six. We can do six, but I'll have to come back for it when it's all dry. And uh, I'll see you all next time.